This is Brightside Home Theater. Home Theater Nerds, welcome to the Bright Side Home Theater Podcast. The Home Theater Podcast, it's all about the experiences, the sights, the sounds, the scenes. <laughs> hey, John, how are you doing this week? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're going to do that, are we? <laughs> I'm doing great, man. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now that we're here. <laughs> Oh, the highlight of my week, John. Highlight of Good. my week. Glad. <laughs> says a lot. <laughs> yeah, I know. I say I don't know if that's <laughs> that's a good thing or a bad thing. But. Oh, so much fun! So much fun. Uh, anything uh, interesting non home theater you'd go on this week? Um, no, not really. A couple uh, birthday parties from grandkids. Nice. Um, that's about it. Yeah, we haven't talked about that in a while on, the, on this podcast. It's like birthday season, I guess. Like because well, all the birthdays seem to be coming like <laughs> back to back to back uh, right now. So, how many grandchildren are you up to now? Nine. Still at nine. Holding at Still nine. At nine huh? Yeah. You have hold, nine hold it, grandchildren. Steady at nine. Yes. I don't yes. think we've discussed that on this podcast yet. Probably not. That's more a chat thing. So. Yeah, we yeah, that's the last time we talked about it. Because you had a run there where it was like grandchild after grandchild back. Well, and that's why I'm saying that now all their birthdays are hitting too. <laughs> so I was like a party last week, a party the week uh, before, you know. Uh, <sighs> um so. Yeah, I got a... oh, I have big, no grandchildren, but my daughter and her fiance bought a house. Oh yeah? Yeah. I didn't yeah, you didn't tell me that. <laughs> I that's just news. it just happened yesterday. Yeah. Oh, okay. It just happened yesterday. It's um, awesome. I get yeah. Close by. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Right up. In, it's in um, Auburn, right near okay. their work, uh, right off of the Mass Pike, so that they're like she commutes into Boston and he works right in Auburn. Right. Um, so that you know, it's a little, uh, little, little. Um, it's a house from 1960. Uh, okay. An old couple that lived there before just passed away, and the family's selling it. Uh, it's got new AC, central air got put in in the last few years. It's got a br- nice. big oversized two car garage added on to it, but it's all like all wood paneling inside. Oh yeah. <laughs> so it's like it's like yeah, it's like an Irish person's dream. <laughs> so, I was gonna say, oh, the question on everybody's mind is, where are you building the theater? <laughs> oh, we've already <laughs> talked about it. They got a big open basement, but it's got low go. low ceilings, and yeah. my daughter and I were already talking about it and I uh I texted her uh, fiance Greg and I was like hey congratulations on the house and he goes yeah we got to talk about the basement I go yep Meg and I are already on it <laughs> but I guess the ceilings are it's like below seven feet it's like oh, right, six and change it, but it's gonna make it tough well the well no screen. <laughs> no what the, yeah exactly no what we, we'll just do a single floor I said to her I go we'll just put in some seats and and yeah. you just won't have just no riser, no yeah. riser, and it'll just be a viewing room. And but we could definitely get a screen in there. And I was thinking even like an OLED or something, a, a, an oversized OLED. You could put get them an close. 80, yeah, eighty inch, eighty three inch OLED yeah. or something. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, they were we, we were joking about it already. Like yeah. we got a project for you, so um, yeah. So I, I was really excited about that. <laughs> I was like, oh my god, I'm yeah, like, I know you I'm, get to go build another theater. <laughs> yeah, that too. Um, but yeah, she's getting married in December. They have the house. Hopefully they will have closed on it before they get before married, they. but they might not. They might not. Cause it's an, in a state sale. So oh, it okay. takes a little longer, right. but, um, but yeah, so she's really excited about that. And, uh, that's awesome. I said to her, I go, man, you're doing this adulting thing really fast. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, I was like, it's crazy. I'm like, cause she's only 23. Yeah. Her and Greg, they're 23 years old and you know you know got a good deal in the house uh they got exactly what they asked um the it was i think the hot they got they offered five thousand over the asking price and they got it and it was like but i don't think that they were asked they weren't looking for top dollar they were looking for good people right the people that were selling it really because it's in a small neighborhood yeah 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 so it was like they were happy it was going to a young couple 
you know. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah, last night I was like ready for bed. I'm like, oh, what are you work? My, she's a nurse. And right. like her, so her schedule is all over the place. I go, when are you working this week? I go, oh, wait a minute. Are you retired yet? Because <laughs> like, the way you're doing things, for all I know, right. you just you're you're retired by now. I'm still working my ass off over here. Right. Like you're doing it right. I'm screwing up left and right. So, but yeah. So no grandchildren yet, but she has the no, house but, for them. Hey, you got a house and a marriage coming up, so I'm sure it's uh, yeah. not far away. I, <laughs> slow down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so all right. And uh, John, yes, we are recording. Oh, I, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> uh, all right. Are we ready to get to our um, our promos, our promo page where we promote ourselves? <laughs> yes. I'm all right. Yeah, ahead. let's get to it. Uh, if you're watching us on YouTube, thank you very much. Uh, and if you haven't yet, please hit that subscribe button at, at the little at the bottom of the page there. Or it's actually on the page. It's a little thing in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Uh, you can click on that, or you can follow us along on Twitter at BrightSideHT. Uh, and if you're so inclined and you would really like to be on the show, you can email us at BrightSideHomeTheater at gmail.com, and you can participate in a Takeover Tuesday where the listeners take over the show. Uh, it's been so amazing, like so much fun. It's like every week, it's somebody, there's a lot of similarities, but everybody's different and uh, everybody right. has a really good time and they get, they're all nervous, not all nervous, but a lot of them are nervous. And then once we're two minutes into it, they're like, oh my God. This, yeah. It, Cause you just calm down and start talking. Yeah, exactly. But. We're all just talking home theater. Uh, any links or anything like that, you can go to brightsidehometheater.com. All the stuff we talk about, there should be links. If there are links to it, they'll be there. Uh, also in the show notes and coming up, uh, by the time you hear and see this, there should be a link on, um, on the website for, uh, for, to, uh, buy popcorn. So okay. I, yeah, I have, a, I'm trying to figure out how to say it. It was like, so like HT guys have, you know, buy us a cup of coffee, a calf pal, and they, you can buy them you know, different pricing or whatever, but Ara is going to help me set that up this week. Uh, and it should be up and running by, by the time this airs on Friday. Uh, awesome. and so it's another way to help support the show. Uh, and there will be a way to get you into the green room that way. So you can, you know, be on the show, you could support us on Patreon, which we'll get to in a minute. And, or you, this is another way to buy a box of popcorn. So if you're hearing this, go to the website, brightsidehometheater.com. And there should be boxes of popcorn there that you can buy that can help support the show. Uh, so, uh, but yeah, as I just alluded to, there is one other way you can support the show and it is John's favorite. What is that, John? That is patreon.com slash the bright side home theater. Yes. Uh, although I kind of like the popcorn idea too. So yeah, that's you know. Well, yeah. Cause we'll get to that when we get to, uh, well, let's get to the, uh, our patrons of the week, our patron of the week, yeah. our new patrons. What do we got, John? <laughs> um, so do you want to do the activity? First? Yeah, let's do activity okay. first. All right. So um, first thing we have Paul Vanderwall, who um, tripled his contribution for yeah. this month, um, primarily so that it would go to our charity of, yes. of the month, which is the American Heart Association. Um in a completely unrelated announcement, uh, we have decided to make the American Heart Association our permanent <laughs> charity here on the Bright Side Home Theater. <laughs> so that's where we're going to be giving our money every month. Yeah, uh, uh, that'll come um, up in in the email. I'll have I have Paul's email too uh, about that. Right. But yeah, it's like he 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 yeah tripled his amount to an insane amount. And, right. uh, but yeah, it was just for the month because he wants to, and, and we'll talk about it when we get to the email, but which John's, actually, this is where the box of popcorn would come in because exactly. rather than going in and doing this yes. for one month on Patreon, he could have gone in and, uh, bought a box of popcorn um, yes. and that donation would have gone straight in. So, um, correct. but that option wasn't available. <laughs> right. But you right can now. get creative but, like Paul right. did. So thank you very much, but that's, Paul. That's awesome. Um, yep. And then John Brock um, signed up 
who was wow. yeah he had signed up before we were even before he was on with me for two on tuesday and yeah just an amazing and we talked about it i was like you kind of went over and above with your amount there buddy and uh i don't know if you heard that one john and i, I talking it's i didn't no no i didn't okay and, and it's funny just as john and i were uh just talking or as you and i are talking right now john actually asked about that um pop it, the can pop in, oh, in, really? in the podcast and while we podcast. were just talking the can just popped so we're oh, at that awesome. 10 minutes and 17 seconds which is pretty funny but um but yeah he he's he john go back and li- if you haven't listened to tuesday's take over tuesday go back and listen because he's got an amazing story it really oh, yeah? he's had he's been wanting a theater for like 15 years right and at every turn it something happened mm-hmm. i mean it's i don't want to give it away but you feel we laughed but it's it, part of it is heartbreaking you're right. like what is going on but he's got when he's done he's going to have an amazing theater and i i mean i even joked to him when you start hearing about the gear and i was like um did you have a budget for this <laughs> because right. it, it went out the window but right um but yeah we talked for over 3 hours and, oh jeez! Uh, yeah, it's it's a long one. I actually and, I did, which I did see because I saw the I saw it go up on, um, yeah, iTunes this morning and it was like three hours and twenty two minutes. Yeah, so. yeah. So yep. Um, but yeah. So thank you, John. Thanks for participating in Takeover Tuesday. Thank you for your you know being a patron. Really appreciate that. Um, yeah. So and what else yeah, do we have? Awesome. Um, well, then we have our patron of the week, which yep. is David. Soti, yep. I think if I said that's that right, yeah, I'm not uh, sure. Patron for 12 months. So thank you, David. Yep, for the support. Thank you. And we also, and then we have, we're up to 26 patrons. Yep. And our estimated monthly earnings have jumped to a whopping 187. Yes. So yes, that will come back down. Because it will. you know, it's just for you know, month. the monthly so. one, but but still, we're getting closer and closer to that two hundred. Which you know, we're donating fifty percent for every you know. So once we get to two hundred, then that hundred dollars that we're donating, because it's you know, we'll start increasing to our right. donations. Um, this is uh, the last week for the American Heart Association. So probably over the weekend, I'll be sending out our hundred dollars to them. And then next week we'll talk about what um, October's is our donation for October. Um, awesome. But yeah, and if you want again, if you want to give to directly to the American Heart Association, just go to heart.org and just click on the page anywhere. <laughs> right. It's like, donate monthly. Donate once. Donate now. Donate. <laughs> uh, oh, and in small, I'm not even kidding you. I'm looking at the page right now, and in small letters at the top, it is a link. Heart attack and stroke symptoms. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's like, so like, if you want to know, if you want to know about symptoms, you've got to navigate What's around all the donate that, buttons. <laughs> and it's behind a paywall. So you have to donate to read them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. So, uh, look at us making light of heart attacks. I know. I know. Right. <laughs> hey, I've had one. So. I know you have. I know you have. <laughs> I can, I can um, joke. Yes, you can. And, I know people that have had them. <laughs> so it's not act, funny. I mean, yeah, it's not a funny. joke, but <laughs> no, um, no. And we'll, we'll get to that when we talk about Paul's email as well, which was really yeah. good. So, all right. Um, you ready to, Oh, you know what we haven't done yet, John? What? Oh, we have not done. What haven't it yet. we done? <laughs> oh, we have, we have a new feature this week. Um, for our, our listener, our timestamps. Oh, okay. We have a new feature this week where it's it's an amazing feature, actually. It's it's me. So okay. I'm going to be talking to me in the future. So future okay. me is going to tell us the timestamps. Okay. Fantastic. All, All right. right. So I'm I'm going to ask the questions, and then future me will answer said questions. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're just getting so stupid. <laughs> I know. But, that sounds good. All right. <laughs> I just I'm just long for the ride because I right. don't know what we're doing. I but. know. I know you don't. All right. 
So, DJ, future DJ, when are tweaks coming up? 16 minutes and 35 seconds. <laughs> Thank you. When, when are listener experiences coming up? 24 minutes, 47 seconds. <laughs> What time is Steve going to be on? One hour, 20 minutes, and 18 oh, really? seconds. Okay. And, <clears throat> oh, man. Excuse you. <laughs> 4K, thank you. 4K releases. What time are we going to be listening to that? Two minutes, 33 seconds of the next podcast. And John and I's HT experience. What time is that going to be appearing on the show? Five minutes, seven seconds. <laughs> This may be different next week. <laughs> Why? <laughs> hey, if you can't have fun, what are we doing, right? Yeah. Um, and I think, <laughs> is Todd yeah. going to be taking part in the show? Yes, but at 31 <laughs> minutes and 8 seconds of Oh, part thank two. you very much. I appreciate that. All right. That'll do it for the timestamps for this week. <laughs> Oh, is that uh, good? I <laughs> guess. John. We'll see how it comes out. <laughs> John. John. I, I meant to tell you about that one before. <laughs> yeah, that was that was new. That was, yeah, I just saw you catch yourself. Yeah, that was new. Yeah. You were about to say dumb. <laughs> <laughs> I saw your lips forming dumb. That was new. New. Uh, new. All right. All right. We ready to get to tweaks? Yeah, <laughs> because, sure. because I already told you what time it's starting, so it's got to start yeah, now. Right? Now, it's right now, <laughs> it's got to start now. If we don't start, we're wrong. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if we don't start now, we're late. <laughs> exactly. So. Oh, for the love of God, my notes. Uh, please let me in. Thank you. All right, all right. Did you? You had one. Is this a? I did have one. All right. What happened with this one? Well, again, this is just another one of those. I don't know how this oh, got wait a turned minute. I on. I forgot to play things. the sounder. Oh, okay. <laughs> I wouldn't know. <laughs> I know. All right, now back to that. What's what's your tweak for this week? <laughs> yeah, like I said, this is just another one of those. I don't know why this setting was turned on in the first place. Things, but you know, as I'm watching TV, I sit there and I just kind of look through the app. Yeah. Hit all the different settings. And um, what was I watching? Because um, it was something that it made a big difference. Oh, it was C. I was sitting there watching C on yeah, Friday yeah. night. And I was just poking through um, the settings on my, my app for the Denon. And I saw that loudness management was turned on. Um, Interesting. And, yeah, I didn't know. I don't know why that was turned on, but I turned it off and again, immediately heard a, a huge difference. Like mm. it just um, <laughs> it got loud. <laughs> well, it got louder, but again, it got fuller too. Like yeah. it just sounded better. Um, and it's just another one of those settings that somehow was Gremlins. on. Yeah. Well, and the thing is, you know, I used to watch everything on movie mode and I think I had all the tweaks set. But then a while back, I switched to watching everything in game mode mm -hmm. after we had talked at one point. And, um, you know, I either didn't change that because it was one of the default settings that I didn't know about or, or right. you know, who knows what. <laughs> but right. just like when dynamic loud or dynamic volume was turned on a few weeks ago, I don't know why that was on either. Um, but what's funny now is that now literally... Every night, I'm looking through all the settings on that app yeah. to make sure they haven't changed back, which is kind of tedious. <laughs> yeah, but, um, but yeah, it, it just made a it made a huge difference. Like I couldn't believe how much better it sounded by turning that off. So again, just something to go in and check. You know, like yeah. go into your app and and check for it. It's under these surround parameters is where it shows right. up. Right in and, the Denon um, and Marantz app. It yeah, it's yeah. under that and it's. I had, you yeah, know, it's I, not I, under the Odyssey section. It's it's mm -mm. the surround parameter section, right? So, um, I actually went in and I check mine pretty frequently, especially if I'm going to be, you know, if it's a movie that I can't wait to really experience, like I'm doing right. the Lord of the Rings and going through that. Every time I put a movie on, uh, I'm just like, and it while the movie's starting up, I can just whoop, whoop, you pop over and you check it out. 
And right. one of them that shut off on me, which I always have on, is the um, the uh, Odyssey. Uh, I forget what EQ where it's um, dynamic EQ. Dynamic EQ, right? I always yeah. have that on. I usually listen at reference level, so it's not really an issue. But I noticed it, right. it was off, right? So I turned it back on. The next day, I come down. I'm same thing. It's off again. I was like, why is this happening? Like, what is going on? Because I'm like, not that it really matters to me, because I, for me, I usually turn it all the way to reference anyways. So it's not really engaging. Um, But why? Why was it shutting it? Why did it? Now it's been on ever since, but I don't know what happened to turn it off the first time or the second. So it's Uh, weird. I've also noticed late... I noticed the last couple times I've put on my Blu-ray player that when it switches back from the Blu-ray player back to like my Apple TV, some of those settings get changed. Well, those because would be for some reason yeah. when it goes to the Blu-ray player, it throws it into music mode. And uh, those are know, all yeah, but they're all know. unique. That that makes sense because right. each each input has its own set of settings. Okay, right, but that's not where I leave that. I don't leave right. my Blu-ray player on music mode either. Right. Like that's also in game mode. So, Should but be, like, yeah. we're going to talk about, um, in theater experience, but it's like, I popped it on yesterday and I threw to throw in Bohemian Rhapsody and then I'm watching it in music mode. And so I had right. to pause it and fix all of that. And I'm like, why am I, why am I here in music mode? You know? Yeah. <laughs> so. Cause it knew it was uh, Bohemian Rhapsody. I guess, <laughs> but it's just, yeah, little quirks like that. Yeah. So I think that sometimes that switching is what changes some of those settings. I don't know. I don't right. Know. Yeah. That's it's weird. Strange. Um, but anyway, uh, that was my little tweak for this week. So tweak for the week. Tweak for the week. Oh, look yeah. at you. You're naming a segment. I know. I'm coming up with segments. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. My tweak My tweak for the week, John, is uh, okay. I finally got around. I've had a Denon for years. And right. now I have my Marantz, which has the, basically the same remote. I set my quick select buttons at the bottom of the remote, but it's also right. there at the bottom of the app as well, the same ones. I actually renamed them. I have right. I actually I have the four you have the four buttons. So I have the Kaleidoscape reference, I have Apple reference, and then I have Kaleidoscape um Kaleidoscape plus five. And then Apple, like, plus seven. Because okay. sometimes when we're watching stuff streaming, we know that we're going to want to boost that up. One, yeah, plus seven. And, right. and what's nice about it is, for me, it's like the volume set at reference level or at the plus or whatever. And as soon as I start a movie, I just, because I've always just gone into the app because I don't like to have any graphics on my screen, like the volume level and numbers or, that turn, you know, to see it. So right. if I use my harmony, I don't know what, I don't know when I'm getting to the correct decibel level, right? The, right? So I've always just used the app and I use the slider to turn it up. Now it's one touch. Just boom. Takes it right to reference level. Boom. Done. And if I need well, to boost it, one to touch. I look at that myself. It's, it's pretty cool. <laughs> pretty cool. Because um, I don't have that set either. I just go into the Denon yeah. app and use the slider you know, yeah. to change my volume. Yeah. So, so It's nice. It's, it makes it, you know... Makes it just one touch setting that you go boom and it's all done. So I'm sure there's a way. I'll bet you there's a macro. I haven't looked into it, but I'm sure there's a macro on the Harmony that I could do the same thing. Set a button for Probably. it and it would just go hit play, set reference, pop, 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 and do all that. But, but yeah. So that that was my fun tweak for the week, and I, I've I've used it a ton ever since. This tweak for the week thing has really taken off, John. Yeah, it's already, it just rolls off the tongue. <laughs> Like, tweak for the I know it's like tweak for the week. It's, it's like, like peanut butter and jelly. Yeah, tweak for the week. Um, <laughs> people are gonna have to start writing in what their tweaks for the weeks are. <laughs> I know because we're running out. Like <laughs> we're I have a tweak every oh, week. Oh <laughs> no, I never run out. Never run out. Never run out. No, <laughs> we've had a few weeks where we didn't have any. Yeah, that's so. fine, and that that'll happen. But it hasn't happened in a while. <laughs> no, it hasn't. Oh, uh, all right. Uh, you ready to get to some listener experiences? Sure. All righty then. And this week's um, listener experiences, we actually have 
pictures too. So if you follow it along on YouTube, you'll be able to see some pictures as well. Cool. Um, all right. Uh, while we're here, John, I've been trying to figure out a way to get all of these to you so that we could share in them and then I can read some and you can read some. Right. Uh, haven't really figured out a way, uh, a, an easy way to do it um, yet. Um, but unless I just give you access to my, to the email and then you, but you'd have to go in and see them in the email Yeah. because I save them under, I save them in a separate folder called listener experiences. So if, I, if something comes in, I just put it in that folder. Yeah, but uh, how are you doing like the Twitter ones and things? Like I that? screen grab it and, and then email it, folder. email oh. it to myself and then put it in okay. the folder. And then that, and, you know, that's how I found it to be easiest. Um, new thing for the you listeners. Could just put them in a, uh, well. Yeah, it's hard. It, go. Just, well, just put them in a shared Google Drive folder instead of your email folder. And then. Can I do that? We can from, both, can I, I take an email and put it in a Google Drive folder? I haven't oh, figured I out know. how to do that. Uh, you know, not that savvy. All right, we'll, we'll talk about it. Off we'll talk about it later. <laughs> um, also, a way to shorten, condense a little bit the listener experiences section. Uh, from here on out, uh, if we greatly appreciate all of the good show, great show, love the show, this set, which is great because when you put that out on YouTube, like Mike Schramm made the joke, like, I don't have anything interesting to say, but it adds to the algorithm. But it's also a great way to advertise the show. People see stuff like that and they're like, oh, he thinks it's a good show. Must I'll check it out. So we really appreciate right. that. And we need all that. Guys like Theo doing that, Atriano doing it, Steve's been doing it for years. We need right. all of that. But to read it here, it's like, you're already listening, so thank you. Right. <laughs> it's like, and we're getting yeah. more and more comments here. So if it's stuff like that, you know, it's it's going to be stories, stuff like that people have. So we're going to short try to shorten it that way. And I, I took a few of them out. Um, and But it, it has been, uh, I don't want to say, it's still a, a long list, so... Let's start. And this first one here actually was supposed to be in last week's show, but it never, I don't know how it wasn't in the folder, but I knew after the show was over, I'm like, oh my God, I forgot to talk about it. And this, this email comes from Ian and it says, Hey, DJ and company, just a warning. This is a long email. Feel free to pick and paraphrase as needed. <laughs> so, um, basically what I'm going to say, Ian knows I think everybody knows. So what Ian wrote here is his um, he his opinions on like rings of power and character choices, casting choices, and stuff like that. Uh, it's basically there's a lot, and I wanted to answer this because we're seeing this stuff online and he means it and he ends it. He goes, hope that came across the way I intended it to. And not like a bunch of rantings. Love the show, Ian. Um, in, or even the paragraph before that says, long story short, I do enjoy the show. It, it is well acted most of the time, beautiful to look upon and will eventually get through this awkward self-inflicted pain. I think but with a bit more care and focus. It could have been amazing. Right now, it feels more like well-made fan fiction than anything else, and maybe that is the problem. They don't even have the rights to the books that, they, that talk about this stuff in detail, so they are having to make changes on purpose, probably. So I shall keep watching, thus giving Amazon what they want in the end. But I do hope they pull stuff together soon because some of the stuff they have in store will be awe-inspiring. So from that, you can gather, like, there's, there's a lot of stuff he doesn't like, right? But he wants to enjoy the show. Um, my opinion, and this is, when I watch stuff like this, um, and you and I have talked about it for years, that's bas this is really how we came up with Brightside even with chat is because people right. have expectations and they have all these things for the, for these shows. And when they don't meet them, they get upset. And, and Ian's not upset. As you said, he's, he's watching it, but he has his issues with it. And what I would say to this stuff like this is 
now when I find myself not liking something in a situation like this, like, oh, that isn't the way I expected it to be. I usually say like, it's my expectations that aren't being met, but that's not fair to the people that are making these shows. You cannot like stuff. That's fine. But at the same time, they also have the right to produce what they want to produce. And like, for instance, where he's like, it's, it's more like well-made fan fiction. Well, for all intents and purposes, isn't that exactly what it is? These are just fans with the ability to actually make the show because it's right. not actually made by the original creator of right. Lord of the Rings, right? Just like John Favreau and Star Wars and Dave Filoni with Star Wars. What we love about them is they're fans just like us. And we look at this right. stuff and we go, so for all intents, isn't that fan fiction, right? I mean, everything we watch is fan, you know, really fan fiction, right? Right. <laughs> like, um, I mean, like you said, unless it's, Unless it's Star Wars being written by George Lucas, unless it's E.T. done by Steven Spielberg or whatever, right? Right. It's fan fiction because anybody that's not George Lucas that's writing Star Wars is a fan. It's basically a fan, right? And it's it's right. their story in his universe. Um, I don't know. We could go on this. We could go on a big tear on this if we wanted to, but I used to be a lot more judgmental about Mm -hmm. the things that I watched and I was a little bit more yeah. like Ian <laughs> sounds yeah. like he's looking at this show. And when I, when I finally learned to let go of my preconceived ideas of what I was going to see mm -hmm. and just absorbed the story that they were telling, um, my life got, I, I got a lot happier, <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, yeah. and it's not to say again, it's not to say I like everything right? because I don't, but Again, um, I've read a lot of these books. I've been invested in a lot of these franchises um, for a long time, and now seeing them come to fruition on the screen, big or small, um, you know, there's it's very easy to go in with a lot of preconceived notions of how things should be. Um, I you know I went on a few rants about the Wheel of Time and mm -hmm. and the casting choices and the things that they were doing over there. Um, and uh, at some point, I just kind of had a little self epiphany and realized that I was only really diluting my own enjoyment of things. Right. Right. Because, um, like you said, they're not writing. Like, if you want to see the Silmarillion or whatever, go out and get the rights and produce it. Right. right. And then, and then you have whatever you want. Right. Right. Um, if you want to see a certain Star Wars story or you want to see it told a certain way, well, then go pitch your script, get it made, <laughs> and right. do it. Right. Otherwise, it's somebody else's story to tell. Yeah. And you can enjoy it or not, but you have no influence. You have no way to go in and, and impact what's being told. So, right. I don't know. I don't know if that really answers well, anything he's trying to say um but and i and i you know again I, not to be confrontational but i disagree i think the ring's power is fantastic um right yes it, it is different they don't have the rights to the silmarillion or i don't even know if i'm saying that right and so everything is not going to be exactly as tolkien intended it but um but that doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with what they're telling you know, right. One thing exists. And if you like that story, go back and read it again. It, nobody took it away. <laughs> right. And then, <laughs> you know, you can go watch this and it, 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 it it's its own thing. So, um, you know, again, if I want to see the, if I want to read the wheel of time, I'll go back and read it. If I want to watch the show that they put out, I'll watch it. And, you know, it doesn't have to be the same thing. Right. So, um, you know, that's my, my little view on it, but no, that's, um, I, yeah, you, you and I, we've had that discussion for years. Oh, yeah, because like I said, I used to be very yeah. much in the opposite camp from where I am now. Right. And Which very is, rigid about Right. You about were the opposite of me. And yeah, 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 I was very, very <laughs> rigid about what I expected to see in these franchises that I spent a lot of time enveloped in. <laughs> right. And, um, you know, like I said, at a certain point, I realized that, you know, I had to either change my ways or I just wasn't going to enjoy 
<laughs> a lot of things. Right. And so um, I did. And like I said, it's, I'm a little bit more forgiving now with the things I watch, and I, I'm more tolerant of things. Um, and, you know, and if I don't like something, I just turn it off. There's something else to watch. So, um, yeah. You know, and, yeah. And you just move on. You just there's move on to so something much, else. There's so much content out there. <clears throat> if you don't like something, move along. Right? right? And it's like, because, and that's how you vote on it. it if the right. numbers aren't there then that's the vote, right? And the, the ratings or the downloads, however they're getting, whatever they're getting for these things, that's how you, you know, that that's where you, you vote. And it's, he even, it, there was one part in here where he didn't, there was some, um, the uh, special effects he wasn't crazy about. It wasn't perfect. And that's part of the, you know, the, it, it was taking him right out of it. And I'm like, right. I haven't seen anything yet in Rings of Power that took me out of it because I like, I'm not, I'm getting absorbed. And I think a lot of that has to do with it. When you read through his email and I should have forwarded it to you, I, I will forward it right. to you so you can read it. But it's when you read his email, it's like, he's hyper-focused on a lot of the details Right. And when you are like that, that's, this is how you are going to feel. And like you said, like you said, it's like, I think that's how you used to be. And now you let these just wash over you and right. you get involved in this world. It's not the exact same world that it's based right. upon. I think the, I think the wargs are a little wonky, you know, mm. like I, I thought special effects wise, they were not great, but otherwise nothing in this show has struck me as being sub subpar as far as the effects right again at least to me um i i feel like as a home theater enthusiast which most of our listeners are oh, yeah <laughs> um regardless of the story you should be taking this show in and loving it right because i it's glorious like visually and right audibly i mean it is far in for you know like i said for a streaming um show i mean i think it's awesome yeah so, yeah, you know, same again, here. My, my it, humble opinion, but um, and that and that's what happens with me. It's like I mean I I like I bought Daredevil recently right. on Kaleidoscape because I just I love the home theater experience of that movie, and I, I honestly I'm blind to this like it's an awful movie thing because right. I'm just like I have well, so we much Hurricane Heist. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> I'm not blind to that, but right. <laughs> but it is it, when you. When you take it all in and you let everything happen, like enjoy the experience of being there and not get so focused on, wait a minute, is that pixelated? Is that, it's, you know, it, it, that can, it obviously it ruins your experience of things. Right. And uh, there, there is something to be said for just enjoying it for what it is. And, and that's what I've always tried to do. Um, I think a lot of it comes from, you know, that, I mean, we came from art. We right. have created stuff that people went, what the hell were you thinking there? Right. And we have our reasons. Doesn't mean they have to like it, but we have our reasons. Everything is done for a reason when you create a piece. Right. And then it's right. like, some people might not understand it, but that's, that's fine. So that's what these are. It's like, it's art based off of somebody else's art. And right. that's what we're doing here. So, um, Yeah. So hopefully that can, uh, you know, without having to read the entire email, hopefully that can uh, answer some some of the questions for Ian and, and for others. And it, it really, it's, it's a great email, Ian. It's fantastic because it literally is why we came up with Brightside. Um, because there's a lot of this going on. And I think that it's just, there is a better way to uh, consume stuff that it, right. it just, you know, be a little bit more forgiving for stuff. Because not everything has to be, Perfect. <laughs> uh, all right. Let's see. Next up, we have... Oh, here we go. Let me get back to that. Oh, Dale. All right. So this is Dale. Uh, Dale actually sent a bunch of pictures. I forwarded you this one, the email of this one with yes. his uh, theater because it had all yeah. the Star Wars stuff. So that that's going to be playing on the screen. They can't even see us now, John. So feel free. Step out. You know, stretch your legs. Okay. Even though you're not wearing pants. Um, <clears throat> Dale says, hi there. I found your YouTube channel about a month ago and have really enjoyed the content. 
I just finished up my second home theater build in the past eight years. You convinced me to pull the trigger on my Kaleidoscape setup. I just thought I would send you a few pictures of the build. I designed all of the theater myself and did a lot of the work myself. I enlisted the help of Magnolia Best Buy for all of the help with AV equipment and install. Anyways, please keep up the good work on the show. Best regards, Dale. So he has a Sony 4K projector, 115-inch acoustically transparent screen, and a Kaleidoscape 6 Terra Strata player. Uh, P.S. I live in the Austin, Texas area. Not in areas on all caps. He goes, not sure what part of the country you guys are in, but if you're short on guests or content, I'd love to come on and talk with you. Star Wars nut also, LOL. So uh, as you can tell on YouTube, he is a Star Wars nut. He has a uh, full, full-size Stormtrooper in there. Yeah, looks uh, great. Pilot, I think. He has uh, some video games. Uh, pinball machines. Uh, Todd Anderson would love that. Uh, D and G cinema sign over the door. It is beautiful looking place. Uh, star looks like a star field on the ceiling. Um, yeah, really, really nice. Really cool. Uh, yeah, it's really awesome. Is that a Cylon or is that a, I can't tell what that one is I don't know. in I'm the other side. I'm right now. They're so I, big. I couldn't look at them. I had to actually. I couldn't even look at them on my computer. I had to like the sc- shrink them down. Oh, oh, the pictures. The pictures were huge. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so I uh, tried to look at them on my phone. I was like, I don't know awesome. what I'm looking at. I had to awesome. <laughs> so go to the computer but, and and reduce them down. But yep. But yeah, but, they look awesome. Yeah, that it does. Looks really good. Uh, and Dale is scheduled to be on the show. So that will oh, great. A few weeks, Dale will be on. So that'll be a lot of fun too. All right. Uh, next up, uh, Mark V on Twitter. Mark says, uh, let's see. Bright side. Uh, actually, let me try going to here to look at it so I can read these here now, maybe. Oops. Oops. Nope. Nope. Do, 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 do. There we go. Mark says, uh, Brightside HT at Legal Beagle OK from a pool player who's always wanted a stream of this movie. Pool Hall Junkies is my third favorite billiard movie right behind Color of Money. Available on Tubi and Prime. Fun, fun movie if you like hustling. Not, not a lot of manners, but tons of sarcasm. And I replied to him on, not really a fan of sarcasm. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See what I did there, John? I did. Do you see what I did there? <laughs> I do. I do see what you did there. Uh, okay. Uh, the Kaleidoscape Terror Experience from Jackson Todd on YouTube. I really appreciate the video. You did a great job of explaining all the different areas that I had questions about. Unfortunately, now I have the gotta have it bug, LOL. <laughs> yeah. Join the club. <laughs> Join the club. I was like, I think I replied to him. I'm like, uh, yeah, I've had that bug for like 20 years <laughs> before I was able to like uh, be remedied. Yeah. Uh, WV. Before I got the cure. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> cure ain't cheap. Um, no. WV Brew on Twitter, Brightside HT. While the 7.1 soundtrack was good enough, Doctor Strange and Multiverse in 3D was really fantastic. The travel through multiverse was worth the price of admission. Uh, I really liked hearing that. I'm going to have to track that down because as soon as yeah. he said that, that idea of like when they're traveling through them, it, that in 3D w- would be fantastic. Yeah. Uh, Hans Zimmer on YouTube from Theo. I'm sorry to hear what that, John. Hope things turn around for you. And I was like, what is he talking about? And it, your probably store. The store. Yeah, yeah. Probably the store. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, really nice. See you, Pretty Theo. good week last week. So Did you? Uh, yeah. So, nice. Um, Theo was a listener of chat as well. Yes. So he uh, he yeah. knows this full story as well. So, but yeah. Um, but yeah, that was nice of him to say. Yeah. Uh, thank you. WV again on Twitter. Well, I finally found use for 2D to 3D conversion on my LG TV. The show C on Apple TV converts amazingly well. Very layered and very sharp. Uh, hmm. I didn't even know that was a thing. I didn't either. I've never heard of that. That's awesome. So anybody with an LG TV and that likes the show C, if you have that capability, I was like, that's all. Leave it to WV. He has all that. Yeah. He loves 3D. Huge 3D fan. 
Um, and uh, clearly, <laughs> right? My, my projector just got the update yesterday. What for three D? Oh, okay. Yeah. I wonder. Does it have up? Conversion? I haven't tested. Um, I don't know. I, I haven't even messed with it because I don't have glasses. Um, I. I'm not really into the 3D so much, um, but I've got a handful of Blu-rays that yeah, I have that do a have 3D. Them. Yeah, I've only got like four. But oh, I have um, like twenty or thirty 3D movies since I bought my I'm projector. I'm debating on buying the glasses just so I can see it, but I'm not really a fan, so I right. don't know if I'll even uh, if I'll even take advantage of it. But um, yeah, it's it, it's good. I mean, it, it, I love it. But it it is something that is you know it, yeah you got to put the glasses on you got to do this right. you got to do that so but from the people that were beta testing it supposedly the projector handles it very well so cool um, so I am you know I am curious so I'll probably spend the forty bucks on the glasses just yeah so I can watch one movie one time and then never do it again <laughs> I bought <laughs> but, when I got my projector I bought four pairs of glasses I got the oh, whole thing set up they're on a yeah. special charger at the back of the room yeah. and um yeah I'm the only one that watches it <laughs> right <laughs> nobody else in the house even likes 3d well they don't yeah want Lydia it. doesn't like 3d either yeah. so uh, it'll they all be get just headaches me. and yeah yeah I'm like yeah okay but I've only found glasses really in pairs so I have to pay at least two well, there's one for each eye <laughs> Oh, that no. kind. <laughs> yeah, pairs. <laughs> I see what you said. So I got to buy at least two pairs. Right. Just to, just to try it out. Yep. All Although right. I do know somebody that's got four in the back of their theater room they're not using. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> well, if they might not be the same. It's just they might be not be DP the same. link. Yeah, I don't know what. Yeah. I don't know what yeah, might no, not. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've got some on Amazon I'm looking at, so. Yeah. Uh this is uh Van emailed us, but it's Van Gool from Twitter, uh, and he asked about remember last week about the TCL and or not the TCL if he should go to the mini LED or if he should go to an uh, yeah yeah yeah. So he says Van Gool from Twitter he emailed. He goes, I want to give you more info on my room. I have a TCL fifty five inch from twenty nineteen with the new TV stand. The TCL tw uh twenty twenty two has can go to a sixty five inch. Mini LED has more zones and more LEDs in the TV, so better blooming control and contrast. I might stay with TCL to stay in our budget because I also want to get a subwoofer. I included a picture, and with the windows, an OLED will not work. My wife is going on vacation with a friend mid-October, and I want to get the TV then. What, the surprise her? Or trick her? That's not a new TV. Same one as when you left. Yeah, <laughs> I swear. Yeah. He says, my Denon and my Jamo 5.1 work great for our space, so I'm thinking bigger TV. Uh, so, <clears throat> so yes, uh, the mini LED is, like, right in the middle between, like, uh, an OLED and uh, I think it was a, what was the other one that QLED, he was looking right? The QLED. Yeah. So QLED's really bright, but it the it's not as... Um, it's not as good at the black levels. Yeah, you don't get the same black level. Right, but the OLED has fantastic black levels. But in a well lit room, it's you're gonna lose some of that anyways because it's not as bright. Whereas the mini LED is kind of like right in that middle wheelhouse for you, where in a room it's bright enough but it has really nice detail in the blacks. Uh, so in the shadow areas, so that would that's what I ended up emailing them back. So, um, but yeah, I wasn't really sure what he was when we talked last week about YouTube. So, um, but yeah, so, um, I think that's what he's, uh, he's going to end up going with the TCL mini, mini led. So let us know how that awesome. turns out, what you think of it. Yeah. Uh, Johnny speakers on Twitter, the home theater tweak struggle is real. Talking about Steve George. Did you hear that when St I did Steve yeah. got stuck behind us? <laughs> I did. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> Oh, uh, it is. It's I've, I didn't even want to say, I was laughing so hard. I'm like, I've been, have you ever done this? I've done other people's systems and you can't reach back there. So what do you do? You put your hand back there to feel where the outlet is yeah. and you're putting your finger in a hole and then you're like, just please don't let me get electrocuted. Cause I'm exactly. supposed to be yeah. looking like I'm professional and you're like, Bleh! But I'm like, all right, I feel it here. Now you got to hand with the other hand. You've got to hand the plug to yourself, yeah, so that you're you trying can to fit it in the blind, <laughs> right? In the you're hole. trying to yeah, oh. I've done it. oh, it's awful. 
It's awful. I did it just the other day when I was putting in the amp. Because oh, yeah. I didn't want to move my, you know, I don't want to move my console at all because it throws the alignment of my projector off. Like, yeah. I don't want to touch that thing. So I'm trying to do everything without moving anything. And it was a challenge. And, you know, spoilers, it threw my projector off and I had to <laughs> get all that lined up again. Um, but yeah, I was trying to reach Tweak back of there. the week, I plugged I'm, something in. <laughs> but I'm trying to feel for where, like, the, the RCA plugs are for, like, um, yeah, you know the, the to, to the amp and stuff. To the amp, I was trying to do it all blind, and I couldn't really do it. So <laughs> I'm looking at a picture of the back of my receiver, yeah, uh, my, yeah, back I mean, of my like, AV receiver. You count like four and over. And it's backwards, so I'm like, okay, this is on the other side, uh, four over, and I'm like trying to plug <laughs> it in. Didn't work. I mean, no. it worked eventually, but I ended up, you know, shuff, you know, shuffling it around some. I had to move it. Yeah, <laughs> but that's so funny. Um, it is. Yeah. It's that. It, the struggle is real. <laughs> so, yeah. but that's that's the fun thing. so yeah. one of these days all of a sudden there'll be no more bright side home theater it's because dj stuck his finger in a socket and right when well, he got electrocuted <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> he died doing what he loved yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be on his tombstone <laughs> idiot <laughs> yeah oh man all right uh another tweet mark from mark perkins at Brightside HT at Legal Beagle, really missing my home cinema setup. Been down for two months now, itching to get it all back up and booming again. How long could you guys go without your setup? So I answered on YouTube. Have uh, did you answer yet? Well, I how long answer. could you go no. without a setup? Uh, I mean, how long could I go, or how long would I want to go? Because it would yeah. depend on what was causing me from having it. Right. Um, I don't want to go ever <laughs> without it <laughs> you don't want but, to yeah yeah uh, but you know if we're in so what are we talking just having a tv like you know my tv in my living room i mean in my bedroom is just the tv with tv speakers i don't listen to yeah. a sound bar or anything um i mean i could deal with it if i had to <laughs> yeah a few days but you know it's still a 77 inch tv so it's not like I'm watching a few with days, rabbit ears yeah. on my iPad, you know. <laughs> but it's it's hard. Um, but but yeah, I don't want to go. No. You know. But here's what I've found what I've found to be very interesting is talking to people like I haven't talked to Mark yet, this Mark, but Mark I talked to from uh Tuesday's podcast, right? right. Um and then I had uh somebody on before. I want to say that was a Mark. Uh anyways. Even like when I move into my, when I build another house, wherever I go, I'm not, I'm still going to have fun building the new theater. Right. So even though I don't be, have one yeah. to sit down and enjoy the actual project of building it, to me, that is fun. But there are, there are people like Mark or Steve or where it's being built for you and you're literally just waiting. Right. right. And that's tough. And it's like just that anticipation, but for me, it's like that never happens because right. I'm always in the experience of a home theater. I might not have the room, but that means I'm building it. And right. that to me is just as much fun. It's, I mean, I love to sit down and do it, but once it, but if I can't, I like to go and I like to build them too. So, right. um, so I'm really, I've had my theater now for hmm, 21 years and that took me six weeks to build. Right. And between the time I left my apartment and moved in here, I was no home theater at all for six weeks, but I had a blast building the room. I mean, and, yeah. you know, and I've told the story of me sitting down on a bucket to watch Fast and the Furious just because the TV came in and now I have the big screen. So, right. Um, what you make of it? Uh, Mike Schram on Twitter. Uh, Brightside HD, Legal Be Okay. Fun fact, after picking up my AVR from the service center, I was so excited that I searched home theater podcasts and found one called Brightside Home Theater. I listened to my first Brightside at, at Brightside HD podcast ever on my way home. Awesome. Isn't that cool? <laughs> I'm, I'm excited we popped up. <laughs> I know, right? We are even in the algorithm. <laughs> we were, yeah, exactly. I'm like, all right. Um, yeah, that's awesome. That's pretty cool. I like hearing stories like that of people uh, yeah. signing up, uh, finding how they found us. Right. 
let's see. David, uh, David, David Guzman was the winner of Godzilla versus Kong and the Griswolds. No. Right. <laughs> uh, Grindelwald, yeah. <laughs> what was it? What was that one? Uh, Grindelwald. Grindelwald. Yeah. The yeah, crimes of Grindelwald. Cri- I think, cl- or... blah, 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 blah. Easy for me to say. Crimes of Gris- Grindelwald, whatever. But yeah, he won both. He uh, he emailed me or DM me on Twitter, and he said, "If nobody's won yet, can, I, can I'm like, you can have them both. Can I have both of them. <laughs> yeah, I, I, he's like, awesome. <laughs> like I'm like, yeah. yeah, I'm like, I'm not gonna say no or no. Right. I'm like, nobody claimed them. You were the first one to claim on the second week. You get them both, kid. So, right there, you go, kid. I don't know. Uh, and we have another giveaway coming up this week. Uh, where is that one? By the way, it's John. Let me see where it is. Let's do it right now. Uh, let me find it. So the first person to DM me or email me for Everest, your digital movie is waiting for you. Three easy steps. So the movie Everest, which is, I haven't seen that, but I want to. I, say, I don't think I've seen it Uh-oh. either. You can't have it. You're not eligible. No, I don't. No, That's because right. you'd, you'd email me right now. I would. <laughs> I'm already winking at you. you I know. know. You're already (laughs) winking at me. Whoever gets this is going to be, why isn't the code not working? Why isn't the code working? Eh, You got to go to John's house. Yeah. I say, don't, (laughs) don't hold it up on the camera. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. what it is. This right here. (laughs) That would be a good way to do it. You could just hold it. it. First person to see this, grab it. Bang. Right. Uh, No, not doing that. So yeah, let me know. First person. And that one comes to you from John Heffley. Heffley? On Twitter. So thank you, John. He paid it forward because he won the first one. So awesome. he won Men in Black. So he paid it forward and he has a digital movie waiting. So Everest. So the first person to ask uh, gets it. Uh, all right. Uh, let's see. Oh, G Cornell. Tell Steve he sounds superb with his new mic. Don't know if you mentioned to him my suggestion not too long ago about improving his audio, but please just punch that he has done so. And I said, I said to G Cornell, I'm like, uh, no, I didn't. Other people did make the comment, like, he should get a mic. He should do something. He should do. I'm like, people, these things aren't cheap. And I, I'm They're just not. happy to have him. volunteering his time to us. I know. I'd be like, I want him to sound professional. From Spain. I, I'm not. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And, uh, I mean, it was great that he took it upon himself. He wanted yeah. to do it. And. Uh, I actually offered to him to send him one, but he's like, no, the, the way it would get, it would take too much. It would be yeah. too much money for me to ship one to him. So, um, but yeah, no. And, and I didn't even offer him one cause I didn't want to put him out. I didn't offer it until he said he was going to buy one. Um, right. but, but yeah, so yeah, it's like, you know, I'm just happy to have him on board, happy to have everybody on board. And that's, that's, oh, that's the other, you didn't Mark from, um, uh, I'm not, not Mark, John from Tuesday's podcast. John was uh-huh. on Tuesday and he has, he has the same mic you have there. He has right. the same boom I have here. He's got a 4k. I mean, he's got a really nice, I mean, he's got, his setup is amazing. And I was right. like, I go, did you do that for this? And he goes, um, not, not, not all of it. Oh, <laughs> You nut. I don't even have a 4K camera. So. I know. And he's like, well, I only got it on 720. And I was like, yeah, but look at it. It's a Sony actual DSLR camera. So it's right. a, and he has it plugged into his, I mean, it's, he's got a setup and a half. And uh, he's like, yeah, I just wanted to come on your podcast. <laughs> I was like, okay. Although I just noticed for some reason, mine's only showing 720. Yeah, I only, uh, everything is in 720. Oh, okay. To save on bandwidth. It? Save on oh, okay. bandwidth because right. who cares how good we look. Well, no, I, it doesn't matter, but I was just right. Just noticed that yep. it's a 1080 camera and it's only coming through at 720. Yeah, that's why I'm pixelated. God no. damn it! But oh. no, I like. I mean, having people on, it's whatever they're capable, whatever they have. I like the right. realism of it, and that's what I want. So, <clears throat> on the Takeover Tuesdays and stuff, or any guests on the show as well. Uh, so all right, next up, uh, YouTube new comment hand with. What happened here? Okay. Van Gool on YouTube. Great episode as always. I think Hans Zimmer is one of the best composers of our generation. 
Did you know he, this is really cool. Did you know he was in the Bungles band that did Video Kill the Radio Star and his first score was for a British movie, Moonlighting, with Jeremy Irons? Did you know I didn't that? Know either one of those things. No, no, that's that's really cool. <laughs> Video killed the radio star. That's yeah, awesome. and I read that when it came through. I was with my son at the time, and he goes, "I don't even know that song." I go, "Oh my god, it's the first MTV yeah. video ever. Come on!" Right. And he's like, "What's MTV?" <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> What's a video? <laughs> yeah. Um, PK Hamu two thousand five <laughs> on YouTube. Uh, is Hans from our Hans Zimmer video last week. Thanks, DJ, for answering to my comment around one hour and 1.10 hours on DTSX versus Atmos encoding. Just to clarify, I mentioned that about physical media only, not, only and not streaming. Initially, I thought, who would listen to a three-hour podcast? But guess what? I did com- complete this one without fast-forwarding even a minute. Just as I listen to AV Rant, Daily Hi Fi podcast, usually while driving, I found your channel late, but it's worth the wait as I'm going back and listen to older podcasts as well. However, I disagree with you. Here we go, John. Doesn't yeah. take long. Doesn't so, take long. However, I disagree with you. One point you mentioned here that people are cursing Edge of the World, Edge of the Edge of Tomorrow 4K version for cutting the base, but overall as a package. It's an improvement. My view is that 4K with Atmos has to be an add on to whatever best we already had. Edge of Tomorrow and War of the Worlds has been famous for those scenes, but sub, you know, for sub demos. So Atmos and 4K should be additional add on with height channels along with some base dynamics. Personally, I would not invest in a 4K disc if they are making such compromises by giving. Uh, giving and reducing L I can't, I don't STH and reducing STH else on other hand, on the other hand, hope you take my comment in a positive way. Um, yeah, no, I do take your comment in a positive way. Um, but the thing is, is I would say that in the war of the worlds, that's just flat out a mistake. I mean, pretty much everybody's just been like, that's just a flat out a mistake. They, something screwed up there and it's, yeah, that's a mistake. But I and that that happens. But Edge of Tomorrow, I don't think that's a mistake. They just literally cleaned it up. But if if you don't and like you said he like like PK says here, he won't buy it if they're doing that. But then you're going to miss out on the rest of the bonus of that just for that that literally like if you don't A B it, you really I mean it is a noticeable difference. But it's still a room shaking base moment at the opening of Edge of Tomorrow. You're not really missing anything. And I feel like it's cleaner. I actually like, I prefer the newer version base wise because it's cleaner. The other one was just obnoxious and it, it, right. and it was like a few seconds worth. So it's it, to me. Um, but most movies, he's right. Most movies, the Atmos or DTSX, it actually adds to the experience it adds it, it gives it a more spacious feel or stuff like that so right um well the only thing i would i don't have any skin in the game because i don't have them like i don't have either one and i don't know mm-hmm. what it sounds like but my only comment would be like if you're making your decision based solely on what other people have said and not your own experience good then point. you're missing out right because yeah. you're just assuming because everybody else says it's worse that that's a fact and that it is worse and your mileage may vary right <laughs> like right so um i would say don't deprive yourself of it just be based on what other people have said um right so, absolutely know, my only and that there, so. that's a great point because you know. that's the thing is a lot of times it's not everybody is saying it right right it's it's, it's whoever shouts the loudest on the internet so. Well, and that's the thing is I, you know, for instance, with Edge of Tomorrow or remember even better, let's go, go to um, Thor Love and, not Thor Love and Thunder, uh, right. Multiverse of Madness. Oh. When that came out, a lot of people, they were not a lot of people, they were select people saying that it was lacking in the base and people were like, that's it. I'm not buying it. But then there were a lot of people that were saying it had really good base. 
It's right. not Lucy. I was one of them, but it had really good bass and it was a really engaging soundtrack. Not everything has to be, you know, earth shattering. And right. it was, it was still there and it was really good. And if you're, if you're purchasing based off of what other people are saying, exactly like you said, it's like, well, then you, you, you're probably going to be missing out. Right. And I mean, reviews exist for a reason. And, you know, it's I guess usually not for us. If people didn't make purchasing decisions based on reviews, then they wouldn't exist. But like when there's conflicting viewpoints, I, you got to, I guess you got to experience it for yourself and come to your own conclusion. Right. <laughs> right. Well, that's why I, I try not to read reviews because right. I want to review it myself. You know, I don't buy a disc. And, like, I bought but not, Ragnarok. But not everybody can buy every movie three times over, DJ. <laughs> this is true. This Some is true. Some of us have to make a, make a conscious I decision that. to buy a version. <laughs> and, right. Um, may watch a review or two to find out. But, um, <laughs> but ultimately, like, the proof is in the pudding. Like, you still can only go so far by reading somebody else's opinion. Right. That's all a review is, is somebody else's opinion. There's no fact in any review <laughs> right you know yeah so um you still at the end of the day have to make your own you know, right come to yeah. your own conclusions so yep yep i tr and as far as review reviews go i try to find you know a few people that are consistent are right. honest and they're not like there <laughs> are reviewers out there that you'll be like almost everything is negative right. <laughs> you're like how and then, and there are people like myself that almost everything is positive, right. you know, which, you know, and that's fine, but both sides are fine, but find somebody that is down the middle and make your, you know, if that's how you're going to do it. So, right. All right. Uh, PK again on YouTube. I watched it, uh, talking about Morbius, uh, in 4k with Ralph Potts. Uh, he says, I watched it on Amazon and even for streaming standards, audio was great. And yeah, it's such a dynamic soundtrack that even on streaming, it's, it, it's going to sound pretty good. Right. Um, but the physical is really good. Uh, PK again, he's going through all of them, John. He's I, <laughs> I, I know, comparing I see. <laughs> Dr. Strange and the multiverse of madness on Disney plus and iTunes, uh, versus iTunes and Kaleidoscape. He says your channel deserves more subscribers and views for sure. Great insights on every movie show. 66 gigabytes for Marvel movies reminded me of uh, once an exhibitor showed me a two and a half hour Indian movie 4K file, which is sent to theaters in hard disk, comes in 110 gigabytes on, an, on average. So Disney giving 66 gigabyte files to Kaleidoscape is clearly a compromise. Um, this is a kind of a long thing. So basically what is, I'll, I could summarize he actually, and I, I replied to him on YouTube, but he was thinking that Disney was giving 66 gigabytes to Kaleidoscape and they aren't, they're getting the full file on Kaleidoscape. Disney produces a 66 gigabyte disc. And that's right. more about, that's not what they're producing. That's the disc size. Um, so basically, and I clarified that for him on YouTube. So, all right. Uh, N I K H I L on Twitter says, rewatch the dark Knight when they are carrying Harvey Dent in armored truck and it's fired upon as the bullets hit the truck wall, the angle changes. And so does the sound, the shots circle around the room. Seamless, seamlessly B E a beautiful. That's what he wrote. Nice. So yeah, really cool. Uh, makes me want to go watch the dark Knight right now. <laughs> yeah. Right. Not that I need an excuse. Uh, on Twitter, at Brightside HC, hey, hi, DJ, listen the other day, and you mentioned Obi-Wan singing in Moulin Rouge. Did you know that Ewan's brother is a pilot in the British Royal Air Force? All pilots have a call sign. His brother's is OB-2. I did know that. Did you know that? Yes. I didn't know that. He's also Dennis Lawson's nephew, who was... Um... Wedge Antilles in Star Wars. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. 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 That's or cool. is it Dennis Lawson? I think it's Dennis Lawson. I might have the name wrong, but but it I, was Wedge. He's yeah, it's Wedge. He's Wedge's um, nephew. Wow, that's quite the crossover to Star Wars. There, I know. His brother like is Obi Wan. 
Wars. <laughs> yeah, he was born to play. Uh, he was born to be in Star Wars. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, okay, there's. Oh, we just got the John's giveaway. <laughs> I already announced yeah. that. Uh, what the heck happened here? Lost that one. Uh, John Brock sent you a message for some reason. It's not showing up. Okay, here it is. Uh, oh, that's what it was. John's favorite subject and DJ's. <laughs> I sent John a thank you on Patreon, and I wanted to put the, I wanted to talk about this one because he sent me one back on Patreon, and I I was just saying thank you for his generous donation. And he says, "Ha ha, John's favorite subject and DJ's most avoided." <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Well, what did you, when you texted me about uh, Paul's donation, what was the first thing I sent back to you? Don't, Don't talk, talk him, him out, out of it. it. <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> oh, God. I know. <laughs> so uh, we have another one here from Paul that has pictures on YouTube. So I'll pull those pictures up. So he says, Paul says, hello, DJ. Thought I would give you an update on the home theater. The Morants had to go back to the shop, still having the same problem it had before. I guess this time they replaced the HDMI board, but that did not fix the problem, so they are ordering more parts. I have not had any experience experiences because I have no sound. No update if all the work I did in, of all the work I did in the room and the sound panels did any improvement. I did make a, quote, fake, end quote, wall, see attached pictures, and those are what are playing on YouTube right now, behind me, my sitting position. I ended up using the boxes from my subs and using them. Yeah, and using them. The lower boxes are filled with all of the boxes from my collectibles, and the upper boxes have 15 inch of rock wool in the remaining boxes from my collectibles. Maybe it will help. Uh, yeah, it's going to absorb something. It's going to absorb yeah. a lot. Maybe it won't. I can tell you what it does is, is make me laugh. I think it I think it is a great way of doing something with those big boxes. And if you're not on YouTube, go to it at the whatever timestamp we are at here. I don't know. Um, but he did a really cool job of cutting out the openings that are facing the wall, that, that are facing his room. And uh, he has an open basement, but his room is curtained off. So he's trying to create ways of, of barriers to absorb sound and stuff, especially the bass frequencies, because he had a lot of, uh, he he was on HT tours with R and I, and he had a lot of concrete around. So it, he's trying to uh, get some improvement in his sound in there. And he's doing a lot of work for it, but as Morant's uh, kind of crapped out on him. Uh, right. He said, I did want to say that I was happy to hear that John does the same thing in his room, looking around and just enjoying his Star Wars collection. Okay. Last week, you said you were going to do a room tour of his collection, and I can't wait to see that. More or less, that's all I've been doing while waiting to get the 7705 back is spend way too much on making my collection bigger than it should be. Because in his room, he has a lot of collectibles and stuff, and he just he loves to sit in there and just enjoy them just like you do in your room. Yeah, yeah. Uh, last week's headliner was a great experience in the show you did the, the show you two did did not bring up, but my favorite is the Pirates of the Caribbean. I love that part so much that I found the limit of my power conditioner. At the end, when they have everything going at 100%, my power conditioner turned off. It was... Oh, really? Yeah. It was <laughs> only at the last maybe eight seconds, but the volume was at plus 10 on his Morant. Oh, I'm starting to see why his Morant's crapped out. Yeah, uh, plus 10. <laughs> plus 10 dB and trying to see if I could give myself permanent hearing loss. I thought yeah. I popped a breaker, but it was just the power conditioner. So, yeah, he wow. did kind of, it was the power conditioner. It just, he was right. drawing too he much power. The, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Crazy. So that, that's inc incredible. So now we get to the uh, Patreon donation. Lastly, I wanted to explain the increase in the Patreon donation. The patron donation. It will be only for this month, but this month, because is, but this month because it is later, literally, literally near to near and dear to my heart. But I'm ching, get it? You're right. I'm only 44, and back in 2018, I had a heart attack and had to have a stint put in my heart. At the same, at the time, my baby boy was only one and a half years old. 
and being a dad is my world. That re that research from that institution is why I'm still here today to be daddy and watch movies at reference level. Well, beyond at, reference at level. Plus 10 <laughs> reference level, actually. <laughs> yeah. So apparently he's trying to get rid of the sound of the crying baby because he's right. trying to go deaf. But yeah, no, that's Paul. Thank you. And that's, that's why we're doing what we do. It's, I mean, there's more to life than just home theater, believe it or not. Um, and this we're, we're in the sandbox here and we're spending crazy money on ridiculous stuff. And yep. it's another way to give, give back and to do something good. And I mean, we're all having fun listening. So, um, you know, if, if, if you can donate, we're, we're giving half of it away. Um, and then the other half goes to run on the podcast. So, uh, thank you, Paul. Really appreciate that. And, uh, I mean, that's literally why we did it, you know? So it, right. thank you very much. And hopefully those popcorn boxes are up there so other people can take advantage and do similar things or as well. You can also just, we always try to give the links to the places so you can just go and donate yourself. You know, I mean, Obviously, if you give to us, half will come to us. Uh, I almost thought of just giving all of Paul's, but I'm like, well, I don't know. <laughs> but anyways, anyway, yeah, I know. Uh, so thank you very much, Paul. Really appreciate that. And uh, hopefully you get your Morants Mar back up and running soon. Yeah. Uh, Hans Zimmer comment from last week from Paul. Oh, this is from Paul. Same thing. It's He left a comment on YouTube that... that his favorite okay. section. Mark Perkins thought I'd pop a, I'd pop you guys a quick message today. Thanks for cheering me up. Your podcasts make me smile on my way to work in the mornings. I'm missing my home theater at the moment and your podcasts are getting me ready to enjoy all the great new releases I've missed. Keep being bright side. Eh, we're trying. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. I'm always, I'm, I'm always, if I'm not, I get angry. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Dan at Brightside HT and at Arkham Comics. You guys sold me on another disc. Hans Zimmer. I bought it while driving. We don't recommend that. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> because I was so excited for it. LOL. Be here tomorrow. Can't wait. Yeah. So, uh, well, by now he's. I'm sure he's watched it. And uh, I haven't seen the thank you yet. So <laughs> no, it, I, that actually came in today as we speak. Oh, okay. So it won't be here till yeah, tomorrow. Because okay. uh, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. So Mark, I told you, Mark, remember, I knew it was Mark uh, that I was talking to on the podcast a few weeks ago. He bought the theater chairs, remember? Right. And so he says, I was listening to last week's podcast and to answer your question about my new theater seats, I got three because I want my main seat to be centered to the screen. I got individual seats because most of the time it will be just me using them and I can periodically rotate them so they get even wear. Question about the new green room. This is at AV Nirvana's forum, right? If it is, I don't see it. Can you point me in the right direction? Uh, and Mark is eligible because he was on the show. Uh, and so I think he's a donator. Too. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, I pointed him in the right direction. And I think I told you earlier when we were in the green room, John, um, this is what's kind of cool. Uh, when you go to AV Nirvana now and you click on forums, if you're not a member of the green room, you scroll down, you don't see it. Right, and it's, it's not it's, there. It's not there. So I had mentioned to John before we started recording this part of the podcast, maybe we should also call it the green room, AKA Wakanda. Cause it's, in, <laughs> it's invisible to those that aren't eligible. Uh, and to be eligible, all you got to do is either be on the show or make a donation. So I, I, I just think Disney is quite litigious and I don't want any conflicts with Disney's lawyers because we're okay. using the name Wakanda. So <laughs> I Disney's... don't even know if we should say Wakanda anymore. So <laughs> Well, all right, but we could say it all we want in the green room because Disney's not in there. That's true. <laughs> and they that's can't true. get in there. So <laughs> unless they donate and that's out here that's we'll right. call it the green room. In there we can call it whatever we want. And if it there begins with a W, we'll call it the W room. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so. maybe we'll have to consult Steve find out what our rights are <laughs> yeah there you go look at that we have our own lawyer now That's wow right. we we... <laughs> John I didn't even think of that I know. Moving on moving on <laughs> oh that's awesome 
that's fun. Now we have a lawyer. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> hopefully we just hopefully we get sued in England. <laughs> true. True. <laughs> oh, all right. Um, wow. That was listener. See how I shortened that up? I just want to see the picture of Steve in his white powdered wig. <laughs> Because <laughs> I think the lawyers still have to wear those over there. Do they? I believe so. No. I Do they so. really? Uh-oh. I mean, I, yeah, I think so. I well, you know what? We're gonna have to we're gonna have to find out. Yeah. Because that's where we're going next. Time to get to time to talk to Steve. So uh let's head across the pond. Steve, our resident lawyer. How you doing? Uh, we t- oh well, no, no comment. I mean, if we're going to start lawyering, then uh- <laughs> no. That's, John and I were just talking about that. We have a we have a lawyer. We didn't even realize Indeed. that by bringing you on. It's like I, I mean, I just love you for you, and now I've got a resident lawyer in here. So I mean, this is uh, that's great. The one. Well, that's it. I, I can't plead the fifth because I'm over here. So uh, so it'll have to be no comment instead. You don't have any advice, client. Isn't that the same no. thing? Um, well, kind of, but you, you, you can't, you can't go to court and go to a trial and then at trial say no comment. You, you are compelled to answer questions. Otherwise you're in contempt of court. Oh, really? Whereas over there you can plead the fifth on the grounds that it might incriminate you further and you're allowed to, to do that. But right. we don't have a written constitution here, you see. So ah. we don't have those, those enshrined rights, at least in writing that, that you guys have. Right. Um, but, um, which, which can be interesting because of course I get lots of clients who who watch all the same American TV shows and films oh, no. that I and you do, <laughs> and then think that that's that's their rights over here. Um, the classic one being a phone call. You've got no right to a phone call over here. You've got a right to have someone informed of your arrest, but not to a phone call. And the number of clients that say to me, "I want my phone call," they won't give me my phone call. And of course, they've just they've just seen too many episodes of whatever it might be, you know, right. NCIS, London, Law and Order. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. There's only like so five or six episodes of that, right? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, well, quite. So they they so they, that's where we we have an oh. issue. But uh, yeah, no. No, resident lawyer. Yeah, I don't mind that. That's quite a good title. I, I'll, yeah. uh, I'll, to use the uh, American judge uh, sort of uh, vernacular, I'll allow it. Um. <laughs> John had one one quick question before we get to our home okay. theater stuff. Do you have to wear a wig? <laughs> oh, now obviously I, I may need one. I, no, it's okay. <laughs> I mean, someone's been watching too much old <laughs> English television, hasn't he? He really has. So, okay, very quickly then, there are two courts here um, for, for general criminal matters. You have the magistrate's court and you have the crown court. In the magistrate's court, which is where solicitors, lawyers like me, tend to spend most of our time, it suits, you don't wear wigs and gowns. So if that's the, okay. you could call it the lower court. I think that's probably fair. So then you have the Crown Court, which deals with the more serious matters. So they deal with murders, rapes, robberies, you know, aggravated burglaries, that kind of stuff. And there, those are barristers and solicitor advocates. So so I do some of that as well. And when you're in the Crown Court, then you have to wear a wig and a gown and the little tabs that that they have around their, their, their necks as well. So that's fully robed up. Um, but as a solicitor advocate, you can choose whether to wear a wig or not. And my firm t- took the decision not to because it looks a bit, you know, it's a, it's a bit high for looting. And, yeah. uh, you know, so whilst I might need a wig, generally, <laughs> I don't uh, I, I don't personally wear In court, one. you don't, but around town, <laughs> no, you may. Yeah, yeah. Well, indeed, absolutely. <laughs> so, yeah, so, uh, so what has John been watching? That's my I question for know. him. I, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. That's I don't know. Very he interesting. Me- he mentioned it, and I was like, I don't <laughs> think so. He goes, no, no, you still – so he is kind of right. It, it, there is a, a place where it could be required, yeah. Yeah. but oh, it yeah, sounds yeah, like yeah. it's not 100% required. It's – it's only only for a certain level of court and a certain oh, okay. level of, of 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 qualified lawyer, as it were. Um, it, I mean, there are times when you don't. There are times when you do. It, it's all a bit a bit strange. But at least I've got some prop ideas now for moving forward. Um, so that's good news. So uh, tune in next week. Tune in and, next uh, week. You're going to come in yeah. hot. Like just got out of court. <laughs> yeah, got it all there. Absolutely. Um, oh, so yeah, no, I'm curious to know what he's been watching. I know. He's clearly. I'll, I'll have I, to. I tried to think. Yeah, <laughs> that's so great. That's so great. I'm All surprised right. he hasn't set up a green room thread about that. I know. I know. I got tears in my eyes. England. I'm laughing so hard about it. It's so funny. I'm like, I can't believe I just even asked you that. Oh, you're okay. <laughs> that's great. People stuff. wonder because it is unusual. Yeah. I mean, in America, yeah. of course, 
once you're a qualified lawyer, you can go to any any court in the state, can't you? Including the, yeah. the you know the, the state divisional court, whatever it is. But in the UK, everything's pomp and circumstance. You can't just have a you know a, a straightforward job. Everything's got to be you know to the nines. And routinely, the barristers are asked, "Do you want to keep this? Should you not get rid of these robes? It's been going on for hundreds of years, and they love it. So every time they're asked, they say, "Oh yes." And it, you know, it, they they just like the, the like the garb. They like the get up. Um, but there we go. <laughs> the key, the Kiwi in me rebels against it. You see, right. the, the, the New Zealander in me is just like, oh, it's a lot of fuss about nothing. But yeah. there we go. Anyway, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do a we'll do a we'll do a bright side law uh, podcast sometime, and you can you can yeah. ask away. <laughs> there we go. All right. What do we have home theater this week? I know I'm I'm dying to hear your take on Lost World Dominion. Ooh, if we can yes, talk and, about that. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. What else Should we start with that? Too? It, whatever you would like, buddy. Whatever you would like. Okay. Well, let's let's start with that then, because that is one I finished today. I started it last night. The extended edition is mm-hmm. two hours and forty minutes long, so of course I needed I needed two sittings really because I mm. started it late last night. Um, firstly, the film. I really enjoyed it uh, far more than I thought I would, because I took on board your your criticism when you saw it in in the in theater, theater rather than yeah. at home, and and lots of people have said you know it's overly stuffed with plot. It's, 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 there's a lot going on and more than there needs to be. And yet I found it, it, it drove the story. It kept it interesting. It kept it going for me. Um, and so film wise, I thought it was good. I, I thought the set pieces were fun. I thought it rattled along. I didn't feel the two hours 40, which is not always the case. Um, so I, I thought that was, uh, yeah, really, really good. Um, and I'm uh, sorry, I just thought of another one I saw and I'm just putting it in my notes. Um, and, uh, while well, I thought about that. Um, so yeah, so, so film wise, really enjoyed it. Home cinema wise. I thought it was at times exceptional, mm. l- l- true democratic, not, not always for picture quality. i I found, I think there were really? some darker scenes where the mm-hmm. grain crept in. Some of it's beautiful. Mm. I mean, don't get me wrong. Some of the, some of the, the, the cinematography is, is, is really, really nice. Um, but I think occasionally you had the artificial grain filters creeping in. So you get that inconsistency, which slightly irritates me. I, I either want film like all the way through or right. digital all the way through. And when they intermingle it, I, I find yes. it mildly irritating only very mildly, but it's enough mm. to, you know, so, so that was a little bit of that. So I wouldn't give it top marks for picture quality just because of that, even though it's very good, but the audio, the DTSX on it is mm fantastic um the multi sequence i thought was really really good um and then obviously um i think it was mark v pointed out on twitter um who, who mildly spoiled it for me because he told me about a sequence i hadn't got to yet um <laughs> but this was the, the 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 plane sequence and then the water sequence that comes straight after yes um that it reference levels was was st- Stunningly good. Yeah. When the and again, we've got to be wary of spoilers. I don't. I mean, we know what happens when I say no spoilers, and then I spoil something. <laughs> um, we, you know, you and I lose Twitter followers. Um, so it's um, so uh, I won't say that. But there is a moment where something comes over the the vehicle in which the lead characters are traveling, which sounded genuinely like yes. there was that thing mm. right above your head, and and the base response to the to the you know the overheads yep. was was fantastic um so yeah i for for, for audio you know five out of five for me or uh, you know bo- boxes of crumpets um five boxes <laughs> of crumpets um and uh, but i think but but picture quality probably four just 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 a little bit inconsistent at times. What now? What did you think of it? I know you did your your podcast on it, but I couldn't listen to it because I didn't want to have it spoiled at all. So I didn't listen to that bit of yeah, the one you did. So I tried to go spoiler free. Now you can go back yeah. and listen. It was really oh, more about the the difference between like on um on the Kaleidoscape we have it in Atmos, and then I had okay, the disc yeah. in DTSX, and okay. I could. There were instances with the scenes that I could either tell no difference or it depended on which you heard first is which you kind of preferred. And I had my son come in and listen and do a B tests, my wife do a B tests. And (laughs) it was really like my, and my, my wife was funny because she was like, Oh, well that one looks better. And it, and that was in, invariably the kaleidoscape. It had that, it mm. just had a sharper picture. And she's like, it just seems like there's a slight filter haze on this mm. one. And I was like, oh, okay. But 
I'm like, we're here. But I hadn't told her what we were here for. So that was kind of interesting. My son kind of said the same thing. I just said, tell me what you think of these two scenes. What's the differences? And then after the, after the first viewing of both scenes, um, I told him what we were trying to go for here and what, tell me the differences in sound. Uh, it is very close. Um, but I had some listeners come back to me with, well, uh, I think Nelson was one of them. And he was saying that the score he felt in the DTSX was a little bit more dynamic and mm. he's more of a music person. So he's listening to that. And I was like, yeah. I was going for all the effects and that, that overhead one that you talked about was one of the examples mm. that I used. And there was no difference. There was no difference yeah, okay. in that. Um, so it's, if there is a difference between Atmos and DTSX, it's negligible. It's, I mean, I, I can't, you know, maybe the DTSX is boosting a little something here, but it, again, that's all up to the sound designer. Um, but it had me asking like, how do they do this? Like, do they literally have two different sound designers for this? I don't think so. No. Yeah. One digital file. It's the codec that they put it on and the authoring of the disc, isn't it? That's, that's what a, I that's, think. Yeah. And even if it's only infinitesimal, there will be some differences in how they do that between the Kaleidoscape, um, how they True. develop their digital file to the one that goes on the disc. It's not going to be exactly the same. There will be some tweaks that they make to it and it might be very small. And, and again, you wonder whether you could, you know, take the Pepsi challenge on that and whether you could tell which one right. is which um, and probably not without really, really dialing into it. Um, but then that's not what we're here for. Are no. we? We're here for the no. experience. So who cares? Yeah, exactly. But it was fun to answer, those, to have those questions yeah, answered because yeah. I'd never mm -hmm. seen a movie. And actually uh, on my YouTube page, you could see people actually said, nope, this movie's there too in Atmos, but it's in DTSX here. So there were some mm. other examples, but I'd never seen it. And I, I did want to see the difference, be able to answer that question because I yeah. knew even before I did it, I'm like, it's just a codec. It's they can yeah. both hit the same frequency responses. They can both do the yeah. same things. So, uh, but you're right. I mean, the overall experience of this movie, I thought was, I, I, I agree with you on the picture, but the mm. special effects in this movie, I thought it just bumped it right back up. And I thought it mm. was for a Jurassic Park movie. I thought it was as dynamic picture wise as almost Thor love and thunder. I mean, cause you yeah. had some mm -hmm. really nice bright scenes, but then you had, yeah. it went into some dark scenes like uh, tunnels or caves or wherever they yeah. were at the time, uh, nighttime scenes with some rain or even some scenes with snow. Uh, there was a lot going on throughout this movie as mm. the story played out that visually you were, you were in for, you're in for a treat if you haven't seen it. And I, I do agree with you. There's some stuff going on there with the, it, you know, the, maybe a little bit of grain, but as this movie washes over you, I think it just, yeah. it just does wash over you. And the extended version mm. is the way to go with it. Um, because there's a lot more story at play here and things get answered, mm. uh, that maybe in the regular version, um, you, you go, why are they going in this direction? But it, mm. you know, uh, it, it, it is very good. And, uh, I mean, obviously I, I will like it because they're, they're, they're copying me with their popcorn buckets. Yes. So, you know, I, I, so you now see what I was talking about. Yeah, I, mean, I think you were dead on, yeah. what I mentioned it ages ago. It's in yeah. one of the trailers. That little bit is in the trailer and there's oh, another okay. little bit of the, of the little boy that's in the trailer. That's not in the film okay. of him walking towards camera and he's got it the popcorn bucket held high so you can see it really clearly and as soon as i saw that i'm like i've seen that before um so uh, so yeah so it's quite funny but um but so i'm glad it made the final film at least in some respects otherwise yeah. you would have thought i was going crazy no. um no. so no it, it was very very good and and i mean I, i'm looking forward to seeing it again i mean that that you know i for me of the second trilogy you know, I think Jurassic World is probably the top one. Then I think it's this one, Dominion, and then I think it's Fallen Kingdom for me. A little bit yes. after that, I didn't, I didn't really like the Ghost House type stuff. It was a yeah, bit yeah. silly. Um, yeah. So I, no, I thought it was really good and way better than I than I was prepared for it to be. I, I genuinely thought it's going to be a bit of a slog and it'll be a bit, mm. a bit cheesy. But no, I, I thought it was great. Yeah, I, I uh, yeah, definitely enjoyed it and would definitely recommend it as a as a home theatre film. I mean, all day long. Yeah. Um, that that yeah. So that that was Absolutely. really good. And a really pleasant surprise. And it's nice to finally be able to talk to you about it after all these weeks and months. It feels like a long time ago yeah. that you were talking about that. Um, so, uh, yeah, I don't know why the delay. But it's here, loving it, and it's, uh, yeah, it's all good. Nice. Um, so there's that one. 
Okay, so, um, right, another a, a smaller film before we talk about the two bigger ones then. I saw a film this week called Phantom of the Open, which is another Mark Rylance film. It sounds like I'm a okay. Mark Rylance fanboy after the outfit. Very small movie. It's British, so it makes okay. the chances of it seeing much of a release over there are slim or none. It's a true story, sport film, about a, about a guy called Morris Fitz. Given, I think he was, I think something like that, who in 1976 qualified for the British Open, which is a, the golf tournament, yep. um, where, and he is officially the world's worst golfer. And he, and he manages to sort of charm his way into this golf tournament and shoots a round of something like about 128. Yeah. And it's a, so it's a sort of it's a it's a British comedy about an eccentric kind of chap, um, you know, quite a working class kind of guy who just manages to get his way into these sorts of things, and it's it's really good and actually quite moving at the end. It's a it's a really fun film. It's only available on Blu-ray here. I, I yeah, mean, I'll be amazed if it's out over there. Yep, I really will. Mark uh, Ryland, Sally Hawkins, that's it. In yep. Rise, yeah, that's it. Iphons, Iphons, Reese Reese Evans. He Reece was Evans. in um, he was in Notting Hill and in um, he was the lizard in the. Amazing Spider Man. That's Reese Evans. Reese Evans. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a Welsh chap. Oh, yeah, 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 I know. So him. That's I, I know him exactly. I know exactly he's, what you're talking about. It yeah, was. He's it sort became of blinking, available miss here on this. August. Sorry, it became available here on August 30th. Right, okay, so yep. it must have been about the same time. Look at that. Yep. Okay, it's, it's oh, on actually. Amazon right now for twenty two ninety nine. <gasps> that's got to be an English import then for for twenty two dollars. Surely you don't play that for a Blu Ray, do you? Mm, not not. Not typically, usually I mean, nineteen ninety nine no. or something like that. Typically, yeah, that does it's seem a lot. Bad. Yeah, but it it it's a really it's a it's a little film. It's a it's a slight kind of quirky kind of very idiosyncratic comedy, but it's a true story and it does feel oh, really? very close to to what actually happened. And it's um and at the end you you know you've got the footage of what really happened and that kind of thing. And yeah. it's really good. So, so as a as a as a quirky British film for those that can find it and that want to spend that kind of money on a Blu-ray, it is because it's a lot cheaper here. Um, it's um, it's really really good and I, and well worth picking up if you know if you're in the Oof. mood for a quirky true story. <laughs> yeah, I could rent it on Kaleidoscape or I can buy it for twenty four ninety nine. Oh, I'll be, they have be it curious to see what you think of it. That that's one to watch with the with you with Jen and, and with your daughter as well. If they like the British accents, it's all British. <laughs> and 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 it's also quite a fun, gentle film. There's a there's a bit of swearing, but yeah. nothing too bad. And it's a it's a fun film. So worth you know, oh, worth cool. worth checking out. Cool. Um so there's that one. Um so let's see. Uh, ooh, right now, here's a film you and I talked about previously that I think you've got but haven't seen. Everything, everywhere, all at once. Yes, I haven't seen it yet. That's yeah, a now, multiverse type situation. Yeah, it yeah. is a very, very eclectic, strange yeah. film. In as much as, and there's no spoilers here, you, you, you it, imagine a film in which there is a fight sequence between two people with marital aids. <laughs> um, uh, and in the same film, there is a sequence where two rocks, rocks talk to each other Without dialogue, there's a whole scene, and it's done in subtitles, and it's literally just two rocks on the screen. That's the awesome. same film. <laughs> it's odd. However, so it, it's got it's got lots of action. It's got lots of silliness. However, at the end, and this is where I think you you in particular will love this, is there it it reaches a level of 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 uh, how to say it. It is fairly profound at the end. There are comments made about. Um, how to defeat evil with just being nice. Oh, how to stop everything yeah. that's bad in the world by just being nice. Right. And it, and, and genuine, as I was watching it, one, I was thinking, oh, I'm really enjoying this. And two, I was thinking, this is DJ's ethos in a, in a, <laughs> in a nutshell. Um, so, so it's, it's really good. So the film itself is really good. The, the, Home theater experience to Lionsgate's disc. So, of course, you get deafened as soon as the disc starts with the Lionsgate uh, logo. Yeah. You've always got to be ready for that if you're watching it late at night. Um, and it's uh, so, yeah, the, 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 you, I don't think I could review the picture quality on the 4K disc. I think it's impossible because there are so many different film stocks, so many different oh, okay. film types and styles. It's impossible. It is not meant to be in any way consistent so i think the right. trying to review the image quality is a loss leader it's very very difficult i just but don't think you'll get anywhere isn't that kind of the point though i think i think it is you know what also, i mean like it's a yeah. artistic choice so that is very like much what so. you would review like how did it work and 
You know, yeah, yeah. Oh, it works. It works in terms of that. But in terms of a home theater perspective, if right. you're trying to say, well, look at the detail levels and look at the the shadow details and the color saturation, the, mm -hmm. it's it's almost impossible. And, and you'll see why when you see it. Um, but what it does have are aspect ratio changes that are a character in the story. Okay. So there are. It goes from four three to sixty nine to two three five to two four zero, and sometimes all of that in about five seconds. Oh, it's geez. it's really really strange. I mean, it it has to be seen, um, and and as I said, it 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 reaches levels of the profound at the end that I highly recommend. It is two hours and twenty minutes long, so okay. it gets a lot. It's a lot of investment, yeah. but it's it's well worth it. And I think you've got it, haven't you? Didn't you say you would got yeah. it, but you just oh, yeah. haven't seen it? Yep. So on a night that you're feeling sort of wide awake and and want to see something yeah. that you've never seen before with a, with an ending that will be right up your alley that you will you know that you will I think very much appreciate oh. that's that's one to now see you have right? me so very intrigued <laughs> you, it, 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 I mean it's hard to to describe it any further and I, and I promise you you will see stuff in that film you've never seen before <laughs> and you know you, you will struggle to describe it just as much as I am <laughs> <laughs> I'm <sorry. coughs> oh, excuse me um, okay, so then, um, oh, Poltergeist. Yeah, Poltergeist you, you watched the whole thing. I just flipped through it, yeah. saw some video of it, saw some, you know, what the resolution yeah. looked like and stuff. So yeah. what did I, you think? I watched the whole thing. Um, well, the film is, of course, a classic movie. We're not going to, mm -hmm. we don't need to get into that. We all mm -hmm. know it's a great film. Um, image quality-wise. <laughs> you have a listener, a follower? Go, What's yes. this? <laughs> yeah, I yeah like, exactly. Who? <laughs> yes, I saw that. I saw <laughs> so that. Funny. And this guy, I feel bad. I get, He's got to be young, you know, and it, I get it. Yeah, but he's a movie reviewer, though. I mean, that would <laughs> I be know, like looking at, looking at a picture of Jaws <laughs> and be saying, what's this then? Uh, uh, is this a film about a shark? What's this? <laughs> I mean, Poltergeist, it, it, surely is you had the mom viewing, in there. It? You had the mom in yes. there. You yeah. had the kid with the covers. I was like. <laughs> it's, not a, it's not a mystery, is it really? <laughs> right. um, the only thing you didn't so, have was the television. Right, the television well, with the yeah, the uh, yeah, yeah, snow, yeah, true. as we called it. That's, that's the true. only image you didn't have to give it away. That in the box well, cover. <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. Well, if he'd seen the previous tweet because it was a retweet anyway, and right, he'd right, seen right. my previous one, that said Poltergeist. But I there know. We go. Anyway, I know. Um, so, so it it's um, it's beautiful to look at. I mean, it, it. I've never seen it look like this. So much so that I wonder whether there's a new codec or a new. I don't know, remastering process gone on just for this film because I've never seen a movie from 82 mm. look like that. I mean, E.T. in 4K is really nice, but it's not that nice. Mm -mm. It doesn't look that good. And they were shot pretty much back to back. So the lenses for one were probably the ones being used on another, albeit in a different aspect ratio. Right. Um, and so, and and, and I, I thought it looked absolutely stunning. And it's not like me to start a disc, start a film, pause it, take a couple of photos and tweet it straight away because I'm not, I, I just, I'm amazed at what I see. Right. Um, so that, so it's, it's gorgeous to look at the details, the color, the wider color gamut on it was stunningly good. Um, and, and I, from, from minute one, I was absolutely blown away. Um, and what was fun is in the boy's bedroom, looking at all the classic star Wars toys. I yes. just, just staring at all yeah. of those. He's got the Darth Vader, um, um, figure box he's got behind him, which of course was was very rare at the time. Yeah. Um, and he, and he's got the Tauntaun, and he's got Luke. And he, well, I could go on oh. about the toys in there forever. <laughs> um, so he's got all that, and of course, it, with the increased resolution, you can see them really clearly. Yeah. yeah. And at one point, uh, Carol Ann, the little daughter, is chewing on Luke's head. At one point, oh. which I never noticed before, yeah. she's actually chewing on him, uh, which is quite funny. And I suspect that there is a there is a, 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 an in joke there somewhere. Yeah, but, uh, him but and that's George. what he's doing. <laughs> yeah, well, quite absolutely. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, so no, it, it's fantastic. The sound is good. It has unusually, it's got the remastered theatrical audio and the original theatrical audio mm -hmm. on there, which is unusual. Um, and obviously I watched the remastered one because we're up mixing to Neuralex anyway. Yeah. So why, you know, not going to mess around. Um, and, uh, and, and again, that's really nice as well. Quite dynamic, plenty of movement. There's bass response. It, it's not bad. Um, but for me, the image quality was mm. just something else. I mean, yeah. I did you, did you find the same thing? Or? Yes. I, I was actually wondering, I wanted to know how it like washed over you. Cause when you jump, mm. uh, like I, I watched lost boys and I, yeah. I really enjoyed that, but I didn't find the picture to be as good i mean it's great mm. it's lost boys has never looked better but when i mm. when i went to um poltergeist i was like oh man maybe i should have watched this but i just jumped around so i wasn't sure if mm. maybe like 
there were some other parts of it that were like you get into some dark scenes, some some grain or something mm. like that. But it to me, it just it really looked awesome, it looked beautiful, and I yeah. can't wait to. Mm. I we're we're waiting until next month to. My wife and I are gonna watch it on a night, you know. Just I mean, mm. this is from our youth too, so it's like just have some oh, it's, fun it's, with it, you know. You are gonna you are going to love it. I mean, there yeah. were no shots. I was I was watching it. There was nothing in it that made me think, "Oh, that's let it down." Or oh, that's a yeah. shame. You know, it, 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 it. I think I, again, if I didn't know better, I, I've got no way of knowing this. But I, if I didn't know better, I'd say this was a new remastering process. It looks that different to any other movies that I've seen from '82, mm. even of a really? of a similar kind of thing. That it, it, it looks as though this is a new process. And it's if I didn't theory. know better, I think it was. Yeah, it's I mean, it, who knows? But nobody stands but it, still it nowadays. It just looks so good. Yeah. No, well, well, quite. It, it, it's almost Sony levels of remastering. It's mm. that that different. And I and I know this film well. I've seen it many, many, many times, and I've never seen it look like that. And again, mm. it must have looked good because it's not like me two minutes into a film to be pausing it, right. and taking photos, or tweeting them, and just going, "Oh my god, look at this!" Yeah. And uh, you know, so it, yeah, it's very, very good. So that's that's that was very cool. Um, and then the last one this week, because I've not seen much of the TV stuff. I've seen a little bit of, of the latest Andor episode, but not too mm. much. Um, but the other thing, of course, is the Lord of the Rings. So I've, I've, I've finished the yeah. trilogy, the, the original ones, and which was fantastic. Let's get into and that. I'm now, yeah. So, I mean, we talked about it last week, didn't we? I mean, mm -hmm. it, 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 they are fantastic. I mean, I, yeah. I just, I loved them and they're not, n there is no play, nothing on that disc that I would change on any of those discs that I would change. Um, they looked and sounded phenomenal. Yeah. Um, and so that's great. So, and then interestingly, as I, last time when I watched them all through, I, it was about a week before I then went into the Hobbit, but this one, I've gone straight into the Hobbit almost immediately oh, after. Okay. Um, and so I'm now onto the desolation of Smaug. I'm about half an hour into that, having done the unexpected journey. Um, and it's interesting seeing the different shooting styles with the time mm -hmm. that's passed between them, but also the different filming techniques. I mean, obviously these ones were shot digitally, the, the Hobbit films. Um, but they, they, but the, the, again, the, the quality of the, of the, the shadow detail, the, the, the dark and the light, the HDR on them is fantastic. And even better than I remember, I've just got to the bit in the Mirkwood where he, where mm -hmm. Bilbo goes above the, the forest and looks across. It's in the trailer, so no one yeah, can yeah. say we're sporting this. Um, <laughs> so he goes above the forest that is looking out, and you get the blue butterflies. And so you've then got the the, the, the sun set, I think it is, over the, the Lonely Mountain. You've got the beautiful russet colours of the leaves, which are heightened anyway, and then the blue of the of the, the butterflies. And it, 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 it almost glows. Yeah. It is just gorgeous. Yeah. Um, and, and just, I, I, I think it's fantastic. Um, oh, and it doesn't need HFR just for the record. <laughs> Cause that was the, this was the only film I've seen in HFR and, the, and, and this version is much better. Oh, um, yeah. so I, I say, <laughs> yeah. um, yeah, this, that's what this, but coming up, um, I'm going to, we're, when we're done here in this podcast, mm. I go to John and then Todd and I have a conversation, not Todd, sorry, mm -hmm. Jeff and I from HD report <coughs> we talk for over two hours. That's okay. It, it, this week's podcast. If I mean, people listening to us right now, it's going to be a to be continued. The first ever oh. two parter, which goes along with Lord <laughs> of the Rings, to be honest with you. It but, does. It does. Yeah. And that's because it's, there was just so much like Jeff and I were like, okay, next scene, this scene. And it's like, and I was trying to keep it to the subtle stuff. Right. The stuff that yeah. I like mm -hmm. that really jumps out at you because you can just go on and on with this movie and, and we kind of do, we had a blast. So that's coming yeah, up I in, in part two of this podcast. But, <laughs> um, but yeah, the, if the one on, of the sorry, questions, say, go ahead, go on, go on, you go, you go. That's okay. <laughs> one of the questions I had, Jeff and I actually talked about, maybe you can answer it ahead of time here for the listeners. You mentioned like I was I I was a little vague on the different shooting styles between The Hobbit mm. and the Lord of the Rings series, and I would say mm. what Lord of the Rings was shot on film, right? Yeah, all three. Yeah, okay, that's what I thought, and I yeah. wasn't sure because the way they remastered that, that's an artistic endeavor unto itself, and and that's what I said mm. with Jeff too. But I'm like, how they did that, the way they they corrected thing, they made it in to take those special effects 
it, that they used back then. And still like, it, it is a little wonky at times nowadays just because of the, hmm. but this movie was made 20 years ago and it yeah. still looks it's as Jeff and I say, these are reference discs because it's, it's the movie, these discs to rule them all. <laughs> really because you're like <laughs> anything comes out you go it's 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 almost as good as that it's almost mm. you know think of all the great movies that came out this year you're still as i am now having gone through these three yep mm. okay they're as good as this or maybe a little i mean the newer stuff maybe it has an advantage over it but the lord of the, it's tough to find something that's better than this i would say equal to but i haven't mm. heard, seen anything that's better yet have you? No, I, and I, I think you're right. No, I, I, I mean, it, it, it's, as I said, I mean, it, it, I, know, I, I tend to just use the word fantastic and stunning a lot, but all those mm -hmm. words, but, but it, it, it is, and, and, and it's so theatrical and cinematic and in both a, an auditorium and a, and, a, and a home cinema perspective. I mean, it's, it's just mm. incredible. It really is. And although having said that, I seem to remember in one of the, the extras, I, I can't really remember for certain, but I seem to remember these ones haven't just been, you know, fed through a filter of, look, you know, make right. that 4K, you know, make that HDR. I mean, I'm sure I've seen a, a featurette of, of Peter Jackson because mm -hmm. he, he's, a, he's a perfectionist. The guy's an auteur or whatever else he might be. And he's a Kiwi, so he's obviously quite cool. Um, so uh, I'm going to say that as a fellow Kiwi, aren't I? Um, but anyway, he, uh, he, he, he went through them frame by frame. You can see footage of him yes. sat there going through them. He wasn't about to say, you know, oh, just, just, chuck him out in 4k that's fine do what you do um he he went through them frame by frame by frame they did color timing again they did they did grain management again they've looked at the, the, the hdr they've done a proper job at remastering these and yeah. i think it tells it it, it clearly or tells it shows um and sounds that way it's, it's it's very clear that they've spent a lot of time and money on this and i i mean how much money you know, Warner's paid for this or New Line and how much money Peter Jackson's just put into it himself um, is it, probably open for debate because I think he loves these films. Yeah. And I think he's very proud of them and rightly so. And I think he's 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 spent a lot of time and effort on them. Again, that's a, to a certain extent supposition on my part, but it's well-placed supposition, I think. Yeah. Um, and and so, so yeah, and so, so that, but they were shot on film very much so. As you say, I think there are a couple of little matte lines here and there. There are, if you look closely, you can see issues, but you know, who's doing that on a film of such sweep and scale right. um, films. Um, and so, but by the time you get to the Hobbit, it, it, of course they are shot digitally. All three of them were, it does give it a different look. You, you never, you know, it, because, it, because the problem is if you shoot it digitally and try and make it look like film, you go back to this grain filter that we were talking about mm -hmm. earlier and you get an inconsistent look. Um, and so, so they, that you, there is no grain in this. These are shot to within an inch of their lives. I mean, that's very clear. But what you do get is you get a jump in resolution. You get a jump in terms of the the, 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 the Stygian shadows of some of these shots are gorgeous. And I can't imagine you could get that easily on film when you can do it digitally and then you can manipulate the image. And it, and it, it, right. it, it looks, and, it, and in fact, you can do a direct comparison shot between the, because Peter Jackson's in both, isn't he? He's in The Fellowship of the Ring, very briefly, you see a cameo of him chewing his 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 carrot in the rain, yeah. and then in, and then in the desolation of Smaug at the beginning, you see him do the same thing. And if you look at those two shots, you can see the extra shadow yeah. detail, the extra quality of the of the of the black levels compared to the the earlier movie. Um, so that when you when you watch them straight after one another, you can definitely see a a change in the look and the tone, both orally and and visually. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry, still got a bit of the man flu. <laughs> oh, God, it's been a long week, um, and so so. Hence, why I've seen so many films. Um, right. And so, uh, so it, it when you go from one to another, you can see the differences. But it's that they are they are gorgeous in a different way. And you know, the, the, I wouldn't want to pick between the two. I would not say, oh, I'll take the Hobbit, not, and you can forget the Lord of the yeah. Rings in terms of its visual style. Right. Um, I'll have them both, but for different reasons. Um, you know, it's just it, 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 it's 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 very very good indeed. Um, the only thing I would say perhaps that gives the Hobbit the edge in terms of home cinema is at least they're on one disc. So you don't have to swap the, I mean, not that you care about that, Mr. Kaleidoscape, but for, for the, for the rest of us, mere mortals, right. we, uh, we don't have to change the disc. So it's all on one. So that, that right. perhaps gives the Hobbit, it's, uh, it's the edge in terms of home cinema. That's um, but yeah, th they are great.
Yeah. <laughs> Jeff and I actually, we ran into that because I'm doing timestamps. He's doing timestamps. And I get to the part. Oh, I'm like, yeah. he goes, yeah, aren't you on the second disc? I was like, oh, crap. I, te- I kept timestamping <laughs> right past it. I'm like, cause I'm, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, and at two hours and 40 minutes, he goes, what two hours and 40 minutes are you talking about? You know, something like that. It's like, uh Oh, so, yeah, um, oh, no. but, but they are such good. I mean, anyone, anyone listening to this or watching this that doesn't own it, yeah. forget any naysayers, forget anything that anyone else, yeah. even forget what we say about it. Just go and buy it. Do yourself a favor. Go, experience go and it. buy it. Yeah, exactly. And then if you don't like it, then you can tell us and then we'll tell you why you're not right. <laughs> um but <laughs> that's that great no, side you, yes exactly yeah yeah exactly that so you know i mean don't listen to us if you don't want to but just go get them you, you, if you're into this hobby if you're into home theater home right. cinema you owe it to yourself to get them and watch them and just enjoy them i mean i just i, I i'm not sure we can say much more can we i well i'm about to <laughs> Oh yeah, quite. Yeah, quite. quite. <laughs> I'm about of course, to talk yeah, for over yeah. two hours. Yeah, oh well, quite. But it's just but it, they are me. great. They are very cool. Yeah. Well, that's all. You know, I I could if I had them in front of me. I you know I right. could. But they, well, that, they are that's so the good. Thing. It's like the. I mean, the final Return of the King. It's a over a four hour movie. And yep. uh, they, it's, it, it, it was so funny. I was so taken aback. And I, I this, here's a teaser for the for the listeners. I was so taken aback and by the, the overall experience and I'm trying to, I'm watching this movie. And again, as I, I say later, I, I get into some, you know, descriptive stuff about like just seeing it for the first time really with the Lumigen and being able to pull out all that mm. HDR. I get into that, but I was so enamored with the picture and the sound and all of that. One of the most emotional moments of the movie Jeff brings up and I was like, Oh my God. It was like, and I, and even at that, I was, when I was watching it, it's like, you just get all choked up. And there was a scene Mm. that I do talk about that I got choked up at, but then there's another one that I'm like, how the hell? And it is, it's an amazing scene. And, Mm. and that's what I think like this, the entire journey that they go on in, you know, in the Lord of the Rings trilogy anyways, it, 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 and having done it in, in a few weeks, I, it's, it's daunting. And it's like, mm. and then towards the end, you're just like, oh, wow. And that's, it's kind of like how Jeff and I were at the end of the pod. Like we're, I was losing my voice. I was like, cause I'd already, <laughs> I'm like, ah, I was like, but it's just, it's so, like you said, it's just so worth it. And as a home mm. theater fan, it's like, that's why I watch it like almost every year. I, and it's like, yeah. I, I, you, you have to, because there comes a time when you're like, I, I haven't watched this in a while. And it's like a 10 yeah. hour endeavor, but you're like, I, I got to do it. <laughs> You know, because it's just the story is worth it. The picture is worth mm. it. The sound is worth it. And it's, yeah, it's uh, now. No, the ho- it's, it's definitely grown on me. No question. Yeah. I mean, I, like I said, when, when they came out in the cinemas, I think I was either too young, too stupid, or too <laughs> focusing on the other trilogy, the, the, the Star Wars trilogies. Um, and so, so it never really resonated yeah. with me. As I've got older and as I've watched them more, um, I, 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 they've grown on me like, like no one's business to the point where I think they are masterpieces. I right. That's probably not, not too big a word. And, yeah. and, and, you know, and, and believe you me, if you'd said that to me 20 years ago, I, that I would say that these are masterpieces that, you know, I would have laughed you out of the room. Yeah. Um, but there's, but they, they, they have grown and they've stood the test of time. And as you say, every time you watch it, I think to a certain extent they get better. Um, so yeah, very, very good. Anyway, sorry. I jumped on you then. Sorry. No, no, not at all. <laughs> I, I actually, the Hobbit. <laughs> yeah, I was, no, I was going to say, I, that's how I feel about the Hobbit right now. Mm. I, th- those mm. ones I haven't really, they haven't grown on me yet, but mm. I, I need to see them in this new light quite literally. Yeah. Right. And be able to watch them in their full effect. And I'm kind of looking forward to that. I'm going to take a little break from it so that I can get to some other stuff. Cause I've been so <laughs> hyper-focused on Lord of the Rings. Um, but at the same time we have rings of power going on and I'm, I'm loving, you know, how similar it is shot, how, and we talked about that last week, but yeah. then now having mm-hmm. that each week to go through and, and really just enjoy, like, this is the beginning. Here's how, you know, we're getting a story. Mm-hmm. Some people don't like it, but we're getting a story on how I guess the rings were formed, right? And it's eventually, yeah. yeah. I think eventually, yeah. 
I am a couple behind. I must admit, I've uh, I'm kind of yeah. wanting to finish this now and then go back and start watching Rings of Power from the beginning. Yeah. Um, so uh, that's what I'm looking forward to doing. Um, and uh, when I can, I, I will. Um, but uh, but yeah, we are we're just it, it's it's we, we, we're we're breathing rarefied air. We're yeah. extremely lucky. Um, <laughs> yes, so, we are. Yeah, looking forward to that. Um, so yeah, so so just moving on to the next release. So I know we need to be a bit quicker, yep, yep. and also I, I'm missing calls here. I see that. Just for yep. the, a little Let's bit go. of behind the thing. I've got yep, some. Yep. Uh, some. I am on call. Um, so so just quickly for next week, then um, just the newer releases. We've got Scream Two next week because yep. it's the first week of October. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, and we finally get Thor: Love and Thunder as well. So I'll finally have the disc to oh, be able to watch. Okay. Yep. Um, so that will be good. Um, and then I've got two discs arriving next week. One of which I think will be well worth discussing, which you guys mentioned a couple of weeks ago, which is Old Henry. You, okay, knew, yeah. you had heard about it. It was one of those yeah. releases that you were like, I, I don't know what it is, but I've yeah. since looked into it and seen trailers for it and little clips of it, and it looks incredible. So I've imported that from the States. That's coming okay. over um, cool. and with the new with the with the slide and the run on the pound where uh, it it wasn't cheap but it's fine and I'm looking forward <laughs> to that um, and also to keep the October theme coming. Um, I've imported from Germany um, a film called X, which is the the, um, the horror. horror film. It's yep. yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. Now I didn't I didn't think much of it when I saw it first on the iPad. However, <laughs> um, I am um, I have got the 4K disc coming because it's not available in 4K here. Oh, so okay. I'm importing that from Germany, and that should be here on Thursday. So I am very much looking forward to watching that and uh, and seeing if it's better in you know a proper cinematic environment. I'm hoping yeah. it will be. Um, almost certainly will, but, uh, yeah, so lots to come for and, and old Henry in particular, I'm really looking forward to, to, to feeding back to you guys on that. Cause I hear very good I've things about good that things too. Yeah. yeah. And I'm a sucker for a good Western. Um, and this one looks fantastic. So yeah. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. So, okay. yes, I shall feed back on that, hopefully. Well, probably not for next week because it's not coming till Thursday. We'll probably record right. before then, but the week after. <laughs> All righty. Sounds good. All right. All right. All right. Steve. So, uh, yeah, so I'm, I think, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm, we're going to have to cut it short for the first time ever. Uh, first um, time, well, only 40 okay. minutes, Steve. Awesome. Yeah, that's blink of an eye. Blink exactly. of an eye. Exactly. <laughs> Thanks very much, Steve. We'll talk no again worries. soon. Thanks, See you DJ. in the green room. We'll do. <laughs> Later, we'll buddy. do. Yes. All the best. Cheers, man. Bye-bye. 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 And as you can see, Steve had to get going in a hurry. So I thought I'd add this part in uh, because I was going to add it at the end there. But uh, yeah, you got to go to part two, the first ever Brightside Home Theater podcast. That's a two-parter. And what's more appropriate than, you know, Lord of the Rings Return of the King, which is a four-hour movie uh yeah this looks like it's gonna turn out to be about a uh, five hour podcast between all of us so go to part two of lord of the rings return of the king uh the podcast for us and uh, i'll see you over there john and i'll be back over there